All right, let's go, grinders. It's a birthday celebration. I'm fashionably late to my party. Sorry, let's go. Herman Hulse, my friend, 
No more settling for less. We demand the best. The grinders are here. We won't settle for less. Booty can keep the same finger at the door. We're leaving the past behind. We won't settle no more. Behind the frosty glass. We grind and we shine. Quality games on the rise. It's our time to shine. Behind the glass, we rise up and stand tall. No room for me. Join the grind, get ready for the rush We got the game and news And we got the music crush Game and grind house We're taking it to the top Put on your headphones, let the beat drop gets me hyped up i don't know about you but i was fist pumping jump jump fist pump jump jump what's up everybody how you doing Woo, man how we gonna do a show after that one man we're raving go grab those light sticks let's go <laughs> wow that might be too hyped up for a show my goodness my heart is beeping man oh man grind house is here Woo. Wow, it is going to be a incredible, incredible show, man. Shout out to Frogs. What's up, man? Frogs, how you doing? Frogs in the house, speechless. Man, there yeah, he is. I'm, I'm uh, I'm pretty cool, man. Like uh, this, you know, chilling out, you know, I and mean, just being cool. Nice, uh, man. I, I've been having a, <clears throat> I've been having a hard time, really. Um, for some reason, this summer alone. Been having a hard time just sticking to playing games, man. I've been so on the go, you mm. know, with uh, with my uh, youngest son. You know, he just turned twenty one and being in college, and and you know, uh, I think this summer is like a really unique summer for me because, you know, my youngest son turned twenty one, right? So <laughs> did his birthday party. We oh, drank. Man. We had some gentlemen's drinks. But the key thing is, I've been on the move, man. I've been out the house more. Damn, yeah, man, with, get that did portal. Key, did key wet? <laughs> hey, did Key West? Oh, you can't bring you can't bring you can't bring the portal to Key West, man. Nah, it man. defeats the purpose of going to Key West. You Frog, know, we're not in the chill out room. Whew. Dude, Frog's in the chill out room, me. man. I've been jump. I'm gonna be honest. So I've been playing Rise of the Ronin, right? I've been playing Final Fantasy Rebirth, and on top of that, uh, I'm actually doing a little bit of high five rush and waiting on Sea of Thieves. Oh, damn. So it's yeah, it's been hard, man. Just stay. I've been mostly focusing on rise of the ronin i should have beat it by now but i just really haven't been gaming like i usually am i got you, i think man. this hmm. i think i i think two things have happened this summer number one a lot of games came out yeah big uh, games too at, big at games one, these are not like short yeah, little games. games yeah they're not gonna be no I mean, seven eight yeah. hour games oh, oh damn no, uh oh no. too early rise too early the, hey hey rise of the ronin four is hour not game? a short game you know, it's not a short game, and, and you know it does. No it does tick us. off some. It does tick off some things we want: performance, quality, graphics mode. So, mm -hmm. not a short game. Yeah, they're uh, big games though. Divers, That's the thing. Like you got yeah, Final Hell, Fantasy. Hell Divers. Yeah, they have a know, lot. I know. Dog Dragons Dogma. Yeah, I've been playing that. There's so many games coming out. Yeah. I think that <laughs> we are not in the game of slump. I think people have actually. 
Um, there's there there are a lot there are enough big double A triple A games that are coming out that I think some people are looking past some of these games and they're just you know in the community on Twitter. Twitter, the Twitter community is just oh, Twitter's a disaster, just, dude. I'm going through. We're gonna go yeah, through Twitter, man. They're pooping on games just to poop on. Oh, games. please, please, please. Well, let me get these grinders in here, man. As they're coming on in here, we got to give our big shout out to. Uh, as you can see, I fixed the scoreboard up there for our ultimate gifting grinders. Yo, shout out to them. They they came in delivering in here. Yo, let's get them in here. Let's shout out Maniolas with the five gifted uh, gaming grindhouse members. Thank you so much, Maniolas. Shout out to you, man. And Ron M gifted ten. VIP grinders, use those emojis. Thank you again to Manny Ellis and Ron M for all your awesome uh, gifting uh, of the grinders VIPs. And if you get those, feel free to use the emojis and also to upgrade all the music you hear on this show, all the banging tunes. Oh, you get full access to them, some with music videos in the oh. ultimate grinders tier. That's right, Frog. Oh, man. It is the game's grind. It's the grinds pass. That's what we call it over here in the grind house. You get all those day one. You get those and some have music and you'll be hearing some more songs, man. Anyway, it has been a wild weekend. I went to WrestleMania. It has been crazy. I've been busy. Oh, you did. Yeah, I man. We'll did. talk about it. But let me give the shout outs to Thank you, man. Also, I can see we welcomed a whole bunch of new grinders. True Virgil got his uh, got his flowers. Oh, my goodness. True Virgil got gifted again. True Virgil, you're almost going to be on the uh, golden grinders. My goodness. What a, what a, what a fan. What a fan. Let me see if I get my uh where the hell's my uh my uh, thing? I gotta switch to the to the grinders. I gotta do my shout outs now. I gotta do my shout outs to the VIP grinders. Here they are, grinders, VIPs. Shout out to you guys. Thank you again. The VIPs are growing, man. We uh we need eight more to get a new emoji in this house. New emoji. And then we got our platinum grinders. We just had Jay Summers move from the golden grinders to a platinum grinder. Yes, Jay Summers, shout out to you, man. You're over in the Platinums right now. Shout out to you. And the look at Grinders. This is this is amazing to me. I want to thank everybody for this. I can't believe the Ultimate Grinders list just keeps growing and growing. They loving the jams, loving the music. And, yo, know, shout out to the Ultimate Grinders. That just keeps growing there. And as long as you guys keep liking it and liking that music, the Ultimate Grinders, Grinds Pass, you'll get it, man. And you get to vote on the songs. You get to hear them day one. And they're going to be some uh, debuts. We did vote on one today that will be shown out. And I think once people hear this one, they're going to want more of it. Oh, my uh -oh. goodness. But True Virgil, man, he says it's a waste of money. But, you know, he, uh, he definitely. But True Virgil didn't have to wait to get his own song. You, you know. Can you gargle oh, my balls? Oh, damn, True. Gargle not like my this. balls in your jaw. Oh, this is oh, the Oh, man, that's not the song I wanted to start with. But my goodness. My goodness. True Virgil, 12, 12 months of of, of uh, honoring that song. Thank you so much. Uh, he also, they said there were some other songs that we should do. But you know what? I do have to say, as you can see here from the ultimate gifting grinders right here, Ron and Michael, we got a shout out to you. And then the ultimate chat grinders, the ones uh, for the last 30 days have uh, given the big super chats. You know you get a song updated. Here you go, grinders. Brand new song for the shout outs for the gifting grinders and the chat grinders as promised. Quality. Here you go. Shout out to Ron M. Michael Gordon. And Teresa. Robin Lawrence. For being the ultimate gift of grinders. Shout out to Ghost in the door. I stand in Cosmic Hero 270 in the game in 923 for being the ultimate chat and grinders. Thank you from the gaming grind house. Show it's up and get a brain house. Show it's up and get a brain house. Take you from the game and grind house. Shout out to you guys, man. Thank you so much for doing all that you do, man. I really appreciate it. I have to take the time out to make you your music because you deserve these flowers everything for supporting me and and uh and frogs on the channel man i want to thank you again for all that dude uh yeah man take some time making these beats on that stuff but shout out to everybody you know i take the time you take the time to listen to me and and uh you know gift and donate and everything i i take time out for you so it's about man 
So, yo, shout out to everybody. Thank you again. And we, you can see with the topics, man. We got stuff to go. I got, and we got some more music hit coming. It's going to hit hard. And we got the, the new music coming your way as well, if that's not enough for everybody there. But let's go. So, first, re- WrestleMania. So, it was a crazy wrestling weekend, man. I was able to make it to WrestleMania on Sunday. Man, oh man, wild. I'm not going to spoil for you if you have not seen it yet. I am sure you've seen it on social media, all the stuff, but I'm not going to tell you. All I'm going to tell you that it was lights out. I love the new era of, of wrestling. I love what Triple H is doing. And, uh, yo, the um, the storylines, the the way they're telling, the way they're, they're the wrestling and the way they're um, changing the God of like who's the champions and, and who's going to lead. And it's incredible. I'm really hyped up, man. And it is really, really, uh, really awesome. That experience there, man, over in Philly, it was crazy. There was 72,000 people. That stadium was packed. And it was, it was crazy about it is that you would hear a chant all the way on the other side of the stadium and it will come around and you'll just hear it almost like the wave. Dude, it is, it was crazy. And that's right, Sway Bag. Like, wrestling is getting excited again, man. I loved it back in the Attitude Era. I dropped off of it. Um, you know, I always loved wrestling games, man. No Mercy was my favorite. And uh, I love wrestling. And I uh, used to watch it every night when we didn't get cable uh, in college, man. We used to go to the, to the, the, to the, uh, <laughs> to like the, the student hall and like watch Monday Night Raw on, on Mondays. It was crazy. And like, and uh, it was awesome. Frog. Dude, Frog, I'm t- I don't know if you watch Wrestling Frog, but it, it's been wild. So, uh, the storylines, I, I can't wait to see my, where my they go. My dogs are freaking out. Somebody's not going to do it. Fra- Fra- I don't understand. Why the hell does oh, Phil God. come to your door every single podcast, every single podcast to podcast. offer your ass friggin' goddamn Game Pass? Phil, he don't want it. Phil, get away. The grindhounds don't want it. Bite at his legs. Tell Phil that we don't want his cheap-ass service. All right? Tell him enough. Actually, don't let me. Let, let, let somebody else tell him. Put blast the, this. Is what we do, frog. You take your phone, you put it to the door, all right, and then you're gonna blast. Well, actually, you can Bluetooth it to a big speaker, and then what you can do is that I, you can just tell me when to play it, and then I'll just come in and I'll just do. Um, I'll just do this. I'll just go. Where is it? Right. Uh, right uh, here. Where the hell is it? Oh my goodness. Where's, where's my thing? There it is. I just play it loud right at the door. Stop! Enough! We don't want it. Phil, we don't want it. I'm here to tell you right now. We don't care. Let me tell you. Right, let me tell you <laughs> we don't care. We Jerry. don't want it, Phil. Keep your game pass and your bullshit. Put quality games in there and then you can talk, but I don't know why they keep knocking on Frog Door. Yeah, we'll see. Just stop enough. All that stuff. But yeah, man, WrestleMania was an incredible experience. I got to see the, the pre show. Uh, we went to uh, shout out to the Mania Club uh, for Connor's Cure. You know, we went over. To there, we did a tailgate uh, wrestling party. Yo, it was awesome over at the Mania Club. So uh, that was something really cool. We did a, um, it, it was like a tailgate, like all inclusive. We watched the previous WrestleMania show and we just hung out at the bar and they did such awesome stuff. So shout out to the Mania Club. That was really great. And follow them over on Facebook. They do some great things. It's for Connors Cure. And, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was such an awesome experience to do all that right before the show and then went to WrestleMania and it was lights out. You know, the, the entrances, incredible. I'm loving wrestling. I'm glad they're back. I love what Triple H is doing, and it is going to be wild ride. So, you know, if you want to talk about wrestling, too, if you got wrestling fans in the grindhouse, man, who knows? Maybe we'll do another side show about wrestling and talk about some wrestling over on Monday nights and Friday. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll do something like that if you guys want to talk about it, because I love some wrestling as well as gaming, especially video game wrestling, man. WrestleMania was awesome. And shout to it was definitely an incredible experience. And then, know what else was awesome? Stella Blade. Oh my goodness, Stella Blade. I talked a little bit about last week. Brian is my goodness. That demo. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's how you sell a game. People that didn't even know what that game was found out. And thank you again. Yes, it was my birthday weekend and it was incredible because I got to celebrate my birthday with WrestleMania. And it was incredible. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. And yes, it was a grindhouse birthday. That's right. At WrestleMania. It always comes around my time. And it was just incredible there. But my goodness. Uh, no, I didn't check out Xfinity Live. They actually had it at the live casino. They had the, pre, uh, the pre-show the pre there. But my goodness, let me tell you. 
Still, the demo. See, yeah, the grinders love the demo. Yes, and thank you again for my bir for birthday wishes. Shout out to everybody. Thank you again, grinders. Shout out to me. Compost Smurf, JC Wild Wolf. I forgot to do my shout outs here. Harry Tran. How you doing? Zero Steel, Joe Roll, Ron M. Shout out to you, Swag Big, Mass Produce. He said he wants those songs, man. You got to get those songs. I got them on demand. You get them on the, the grinds pass. The Brian East, where do you get these beats? I make them. Make the beats. Make them. John Wayne, what's up? True Virgil, there he goes. Hey, True Virgil, them. Almost can get consumptive soul. Primal Plasma, how you doing? The lyrics. Um, and Phil Bosch. Oh, my goodness. Phil Bosch, what's up, man? Chad Stud, how you doing? Chad to everybody coming on there. Virtual Dan, I see you. Stephen Orban, what's up, man? He got some birthday Stella Yams. Oh, damn. But man, I tell you, that Stella Blade demo, it for, so just uh, again, I'm not spoiling the demo and all that stuff. I'm gonna tell you right now, it is not like a Devil May Cry hack and slash, just mindless kind of slashing. It is you got to parry, you got to know when to attack. You could die easily in the game, and the gore, the dismemberment, the combat, the the graphics, the exploration, getting off the beaten path. That's there as well. The crafting to, to upgrade your, your, your move set and then all the different types of specialties you got to do. And they encourage you to parry because that's where you, you get your powers to do your counters. So it really is good. And when you fight multiple enemies, it is not just smash on the square button, man. It is like you got to really move. And the demo is great. And also they have the elements where you have to save at a camp. And at the camp, that's where you level up. That's where you you could also craft items and things like that. So it has that kind of, and you replenish your your health there, and it could save the game. They have a definitely a very generous save point, so it's not as as intense as a what like a Demon Souls where you lose stuff and you got to go all the way back. No, they're pretty respectful checkpoints, but the camps are kind of where you have to you know level up and doing that stuff and and kind of look strategically look for those camps. In there, and then there's some camps where you could actually craft uh, outfits and things like that. There are so many levels and depth to it. I am really, it, it's going to be a great game. I think it's going to really hit. It runs smooth. It has like three different modes, as like a balance, as performance. Three modes, not just one. Oops, oops, oops. The three modes in this one. It does reset the enemies, Leech. So it does do that. But, like, when you die, you don't have to go back to the camp. Like, you don't, all that progress gets reset. But you're right. If you save at the camp to go on a level up, then the enemies do return. And um, and also, hey, physics in the game. And I'm not talking about the physics that you're yeah, 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 on combo smurf. I see, where, I see where your head is going. I see, I see. I'm not talking about physics, physics. Those physics you can see. I'm talking about physics like knocking over books. Yeah, that's right. Knocking over books. Moving tables, knocking over chairs, slicing things, destroying things. Those physics. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm... Actually, performance mode. That's right, Mr. Tennis. Those kind of physics. They have the other ones as well. We, we know those. We've Wait, seen Jay, those. is that oh, really shit. physics you're talking about? No, nah, I don't... Talking about? Is oh, no, no. I'm talking about knocking over books. Those physics. Like, you can knock, knock... In the library, I'm just knocking over some books. I'm knocking okay. over some tables. Just sure. I just want to know what kind of, those kind are of the physics, physics talking I'm talking about. about. Her half wait, physics. What, what are you knocking over books and tables with? Pause. Oh shit! With my sword. Pull. Oh, push it. Double pause. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh shit! Double pause. <laughs> oh shit! We got a double pause on that one. Yeah, no, I'm knocking over books and her half physics. You can even change the length of a ponytail. I have to say, the half physics are great. Like it goes over her shoulders, swing it around. I, I, you know, I appreciate that kind of stuff. And the physics in the game, like like things react like they should. Like you run an ink. And, um, you know, Final Fantasy has the same thing. Like, you're running in, and there's tables and chairs, and you could just knock things over. It, I don't know. I kind of like that make, stuff. I just want to make sure I learned, Harry, that you're, you're knocking over books and tables with your sword. Pause. Pause. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> okay. Dirty mind. Dirty minds. Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up, Link? How you doing, man? I'm doing Yo. good. You play that Stellar Blade demo, or you're saving it? Did you play it, or you're waiting for the game? Oh man, I got like ten hours in that demo. Oh, man. I hey. done beat it. I done beat it like over and over and over and over and over. And I do the boss challenge constantly. Oh so. wow! And, and yeah. the progress saves too, so like everything saves over. Yeah, yeah. That you know what's great too is like what's. Uh, I really like the opening sequence in that, like the way they use that tutorial. Tutorial and the amount of stuff going on on the screen is pretty wild too, especially in that opening sequence. It is pretty. Um, 
the graphics are great. Like, I have to say, like the graphics, the atmosphere, you know, the the um the visceral combat and stuff like that. Um, and the voice acting and the animations are really good too. You know, the cutscenes that they go into and, and the and the character facial models with the um you know, with the voice capture, like it really is uh very impressed with it. Like it definitely for their first game, I guess, or for the first game, but man, it is definitely uh Yeah, it, it I good. agree. I, I would say it's a good Oh, and that game. was the other thing. Thank you, Dante. The music, like the soundtrack, like oh, yes. the singing and stuff like that when you hear it in the menu screen, like you could just sense the level of quality and polish and from the demo that's in this game that it makes me want to engage and explore more, which add that to my Dragon's Dogma, add that to, you know, my uh freaking Final Fantasy, and then uh, you know, add that to all the other stuff that's going on. It's just um it's just crazy how we're getting hit with these quality games after you know right after each other uh and then even they fixed the update they updated dragon's dogma now you could turn off the ray tracing so finally and you could also lock the frame rate if you need to still waiting for performance mode but if you turn off um ray tracing you still get some sort of some increased frames on that game so it's not all over the place but that game does look good that dragon's dogma i'm really enjoying that game i i love just going out and venturing out and not knowing and you know that's another one where you got to look for camps and look for fires and balance it out of well your health bar. Do I go on that mission? Do I go out at night? Is it at sunset? Do I look for a, a, a inn? You know all these kind of things. Do I have enough money? Do I have money to pay for the inn? Do I and then managing all your uh you know all your over encumbered and all that other stuff. Like it's not as it's not as bad as um as like you know how Starfield treated that over encumbering where you just pick up random stuff that doesn't do anything. This game, you could actually delegate it off to your other, um, you know, people that you're with, and the pawn system with that I have is really awesome, too. Um, you know, the the fact that it just switches up gameplay, switches up thing experiences by doing that as well. So I'm really enjoying that. But man, that Stellar Blade demo, I played about 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 three hours of it, two two to three, and I'm like, yep, I want this. I'm getting it day one. I you know, do I want to play it all now? Oh yeah, day do, one. Yeah. yeah. Can't do wait. I, do I want to play it now? Or do I want to wait? And yeah, you know, uh, I I like the way it is. I love that it's. I, I like that it's not just a Devil May Cry clone, like or something like that, yeah. where you just gotta just like just go crazy swiping, or even like a Bayonetta. Like there's definitely some elements of of a challenge with it. And I'm not gonna throw in right. the Souls thing, but because I'm not a huge fan of Souls games, but that challenge is there. Like you you're gonna die. Like, you know, just taking on five or six little enemies at the same time. I'm just like, whoa, like, you know, the, I, and I think it does like a, an, an, and it, correct me if I'm wrong, like, and Link, you played more of it. Is there like a, a lock on in the sense where she kind of auto locks or because there's no click on lock on from what I, what I understand, what I played. Like, there's no lock on. It kind of like locks on. To um, you, R3, R3 locks on. Oh, it does R3. Sure. So you can click and lock on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. All right. Because for some reason I was I was doing that, but it didn't. It has like that little white dot. Is that what it is? That's the lock on. Uh. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. It's very subtle. It's not like, I think like this a game. It's not like I a, think a playing this game, playing this demo because like Link, I played this game. Um. You know, and I I, I liked it, and I, I think this game is really. <clears throat> I hope from what I'm seeing and the way they're, I think it's gonna tell a decent story. Gameplay is good. Graphics are good. I can't really. There's not too many complaints. Maybe once they fine tune it, once they come out with some of the uh, pairing mechanics, I think that needs to be just tweaked just a little bit. But for the most part, what I'm playing, I think once you learn the mechanics, and like I was looking at like when you're fighting enemies, like they flash and they do different things to like know what kind of parry you need to move or dodge. It's actually pretty interesting. Um, the music is absolutely amazing. I mm-hmm. think this game is. Um, it's a, it's it's about style. It's a stylistic game. Um, just the fighting mechanics. I know that that skill tree is going to grow. And you're going to be able to do different things. But uh, I'm looking forward to just not only just playing this game. I'm looking forward to see what creative biomes they're going to have. Mm-hmm. Uh, because after you beat the demo and you um, beat the boss and you you look at there's different biomes. There's like a desert looking biome and like a jungle look. You know, I I I think it's going to be bigger than. Or better than I should say, better than we think it may be. I'm I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, I'm I'm really hyped up for it. And it comes out uh what another two uh, weeks? Uh I believe so. Yeah. And yeah, I like the pairing. And also too, there's definitely um I was looking at uh there are definitely moves where not only is pairing, but there's also a dodge where it slows down and you could um you know have like a like a power dodge where you could do a dodge and attack. Um but yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of layers to the combat, which is really, really cool and uh you know, and the story is definitely from what I'm seeing is that I feel like the story is definitely very interesting. Like it starts off as a vengeance and you're like, you know, you're kind of getting ready to do. And also, too, I've, like you were saying about the environments, you know, the fact that you're looking at a post-apocalyptic world and and you're going around some of these these cities that are broken down, like the details are really, really, really good. And, and also, too, I like the veering off the beaten path. Like it's not just a narrow corridor. You could go off into different side quests and not side quests, but side things. I, I know there are side quests in it, but also too that you could go off into the uh, other buildings and things like that and find some secrets and, and things. And also too, uh, I was like going into one building and they're, and they're like, they got enemies in there that like try to surprise you. Like they were there. The game is, is, tr is not very like it, it, it has its moments where it's trying to challenge you. Like you just walk in and somebody just give you a slice and you're like, whoa. And then also too, just like a Demon Souls game, there's like an animation that you got to wait for when you heal. So when you press up to heal, like she flicks up the drink and then has to drink it. So it's not like you press up and you have instant heal. Like, so if you kind of right. do it late, you will die. Like it happened to oh, me. Yeah, you got to Yeah. You, uh, you got to well, anticipate it. complaining about. You gotta you gotta it. strategically use it. You can't yeah. just do it when the enemy is. Wow. Yeah. You can't be like slicing and then pressing up. It's similar to like uh, I because I know why I do that in uh in uh, Dragon's Dogma all the time. Like I'm just pressing up, 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 healing, and, and you know eating all the crap that I'm eating while I'm slicing, and you just energy just goes up. But this game, you can't do that. This one, when you hit up, like she does an animation, and then uh yeah, there is a jump scare here and there. Like there is horror elements to it too. There, I like that. I like that. It's not all like cyber. Like cyber fights and all this other stuff. Like if there's there's actually like horror elements, like mutants and just crazy looking creatures like and and the dismemberment with the sword is awesome so i love that dismemberment adding to that as well and then i think you know if we get to 100 likes i'll get we'll release the new one i think we got to 100 yet did we get it no hit that like button we'll get to 100 likes i'm gonna drop the uh the song that got voted on today we put out our, our poll oh there it is the poll is now closed so for new music Let's get those likes, and then we will get to the 100 there, and then we'll get into that, and then we'll get into our hell, hell bleed goodness. So let me go look at the poll right now. See if we got this here. The parry system is great. So, Grind, did you enjoy that game? You getting it? You know, put a 1 in there if you're getting it day 1, or are you going into backlogs, and don't put a 1, but if you're getting it, put it in there. Put a 1 in there, you're getting it day 1, but yeah, that Stellar Blade is pretty wild. And I like that there is open world. So, like, let me ask you guys a question. Like, you've been in there. You went in further into the demo. Is there, um, is it all that one level, or do you actually go back to your ship? Like, how does the mission structure work? Uh, I'm not sure how the mission structure works. You just kind of start. You start that one level. Starts out from the beginning of the game. So, um, she's in this little pod and you come out and, um, you fight, you run in, you know, running, fighting some enemies. So you're kind of just traver uh, traversing through a level. I'm not sure if you actually are finishing a whole level. So I, I couldn't really right. get so a grasp. So we don't know like how it goes. It's back not, I don't think levels. it's, a, I don't think it's an open world type game. It's probably, got, it's probably mission based with some large hub areas. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, I would think. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. So, like, because I, I was exactly. wondering, like, because I know that they said there's like a hub, and then she's running around the town. Like, there may be some open areas or a town where you grab missions and things like that, and then there are other uh, side missions and things you can do as well in that game. So there might be like a hub later on that you get into there. Oh, somebody says that beach assault. What was that beach assault and then the city? Oh yeah, the beach assault and then the city. That's all you have. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, yeah. Magna Lord says that's a mix between the hub world and the uh and the other oh man what the hell that, that the hot just blocked off the thing yeah it's a open world and hub world okay I don't know hopefully I'm not getting buffed no buffed on the birthday no buffed on the birthday well we hit over 100 likes so let's go to the polls and speaking of greatness 
Let's go see the polls, grinders. We're coming to the polls. We had the voting this evening was with Oh, the phone. Where's my display? Where the hell am I display? You can't start you can't start talking about polls after you talk about solo boy Paul. Oh shit. We're talking about We're talking about polls. Yo, there it is. Bro, frogs pausing all over the place. So here we go. It's a gaming grindhouse birthday celebration. The polls are hey, in. Hey, my bad. My bad. Nah, that's right, Frog. We we got that. We got it. <laughs> Did so we had the four game the four music videos that were voted by the VIPs and the grinders, ultimate grinders. We had Stella Blade Let's Go song. We had Bring the Hype Back Xbox. We had Hell Divers 2 Warriors of the Galaxy and Hellblade 2 Don't Let Us Down. So the song that got voted in to watch on the Gaming Grind House right now is Stella Blade Let's Go. One of my favorites. So, oh, Richard Farm and Mr. Paul. Thank you, Josh. So without further ado, let's go to see what the VIP grind is voted on for your viewing pleasure. And yes, it is viewing pleasure. Now that's a double pause. That's a pause. So let's go. Music video. I'm very proud of this one. I'm I'm glad uh, you guys know quality. It's it's so nice when uh quality is shared and people know quality and we're not trying to cap for 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 no quality because this one was quality. They're all quality, but this one I really enjoyed. So without further ado, let's go. Voted in by the Gaming Grindhouse. Here it is. New music. Wait, we got we got to get to Phil Ness. Where's on new music? New music. Now, if you're an ultimate grinder, you could be listening to this all the time. You get to, you get access to this when it comes out, and you get to hear it before you vote on it as well. So let me find it. And here they are here. So here they are. These are the ones to members only here. Uh, this one just dropped a day ago. The Phil Ness Anthem. Helldive is that one. You didn't win this time, Warriors of the Galaxy, but this one did. Stella Blade, let's go. So without further ado, guys, you're going to have to listen to it on the thing. I can't pump it through the microphone, but let's see. This is a good one. This might be the new anthem. Let's go, grinders. Hit that like button. What's up, Globzilla? In the world where darkness rules the day One hero stands amidst the fray With a power no one can deny She fights for what is right Through the fires and the darkest nights
There it is, Grinders, as voted in by you, Gaming Grindhouse. Oh, no, that is slow jams. We're doing created by the Gaming Grinders. There you go. Grinds pass. Quality, quality splits. There you go, quality splits. Hope you like that. That was voted in by the VIPs and Gaming Grinders. But yes, that is a song created for Grinds Pass Week. <coughs> oh, man, Phil's dancing. Phil's been dancing in the background the whole time. Oh, my goodness. Hope you like that, dude. I listen to that song all the time. It came out so good. And then basically, you know, putting the music, the video together with the scenes. Dude, that game is incredible. Like, I got all hyped up. After I played the game, I went, I got the trailers and stuff like that. And I put them all together with the music, with the beat. And, dude, I, I well, my favorite part is the, uh, th this part right here. I went with this, like, this part where the guy's just like, the, he's like Zion, the universe. Like, it, it just, it hits so good with that, with the way it, uh, it goes through. So, like, I'm really, I'm really happy it came out well. So I'm glad you enjoyed it, and I'm glad you guys voted in on it for that one. But yeah, this part where he's just like, where is it? This part. This part pipes me up. Right here. Oh baby, woo! That's get you hyped up, man. Get you hyped up. The the other one, the Hell Divers one, is good as well. But yeah, there you go, Grinders. Enjoy that one. That is voted in by the Ultimate Grinders again. If you want access to all the songs, they're all in there. Ultimate Grinders. There you go. There you go. So, what is up now? Let's go into. Now, I know Compo Smurf was upset about the song. And also, too, the uh, lyrics. I've put the lyrics for all the songs in uh, the uh, the chat. So, into the description and stuff like that. So, when they do get released. But don't don't fear. You know, there, there's this music coming your way. I know that Helldiver song. I got two Helldiver songs that I listen to on that stuff, man. But let's see. Maybe we get to 200 likes. I'll, I'll drop a, another one. Uh, Birthday Boy's Choice on that one. Oh, you, you want a Hell Divers tease? Oh man, I'm excited about what I didn't announce. All right, I'll I'll uh I'll give you a little Hell Divers tease. Oh my goodness, maybe, maybe let me say, I don't do things for free. No, I'm talking. <laughs> let's go dance for me, dance. Now let's see. Uh, I'll give you a little preview. Here you go. Just hear the little beginning of it. It's a rock song. This is a little preview of the Hell Divers 2 one, but this may not be the birthday boy's choice. But I'll give you a little tease, because you guys are great. I love you guys. Let's do this. I'll let's give you a little tease. A little tease, just hear it. All right, and that's tease. Oh no, I might not get voted in, but there's I have two Hell Diver songs. That's the other one, The Warriors of the Galaxy. That one, I cut that one pretty well too. There you go, AK. I got you. I hooked you up. There you go. You got a little one. Oh, you got a little one there. And then we all we all know. I can understand you, boy. You guys are awesome. So anyway, let's get into uh, you know talking about Hellblade too. You know there was a you know talking about previews. Nobody heard the little uh a little uh, preview song here. I'll give you another preview here. It's a birthday party, man. It's a birthday party. It's a birthday party. Hellblade, I'll do an intro. Uh oh, here's a Hellblade song for the grinders. There's another preview. Grinders, I got these all these are members only previews. There you go. The Hellblade 2. That's a little intro for the Hellblade 2s. So we got Hellblade 2 previews coming in here. We got um listen, we got hands on. I forgot a few outlets had Hellblade, right? Had Hellblade hands on, right? And uh, we're talking about this. And then basically, Hellblade 2, Frog's Link, did you see? Oh, you saw the thing that went on with Hellblade 2. The thing that came out of the hands on previews was that 30 frames on the consoles, yet again. Uh, but I'm not going to just sit here and just, you know, 
say, oh, don't 30 play. I don't play anything at 30 frames a second. I'm going to take it in a different route. The thing here is that I don't understand. We just did a show where I was talking about how we talked about the Series X. They talked about the power of this thing. How the hell does this system, they do not offer an option of performance mode for this, for the console, at least for the Series X. And the fact that they're making this game available on PC day one as they've done this, right? Why it affects them so much is because now the PC is the best place to play their game. And this is not really beneficial for them. The Series X should have been one of a very strong PC, an equivalent to somewhat, where you get it for a lower price than a gaming PC, but performs as performant as a decent gaming PC. That was, should have been the sell, sales point of the Series X. Unfortunately, the Series X has not done that at all. And now you have a game that looks really incredible with Hellblade 2, and they are not allowing a performance mode in here because that's what I'm convinced. They're not allowing a performance mode in here. I'm not saying the system is not capable of doing it, at least the Series X. But for some friggin' reason, the Xbox management is not allowing a performance mode. That is the thing that you got to scratch your head because I think a lot of people going, ah, oh, the Xbox can't do it, it's trash, it's weak. No, 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 that Series X can do it. Why are they not allowing it to be done? That is the question that nobody's asking. Nobody's asking that, like, this thing. Like, they're just going, like, the Xbox is trash. Like, this is a first party. Just hear this out. A first party game from a studio that took three years to make the first game. Now, they were purchased in 2018. Then, they've been working on this game. They were put under Microsoft in 2018. They weren't just purchased last year. They were purchased just under, what, six, what was it, 18? So, six years ago, they were purchased. They were moved into new buildings. They had the billion-dollar Microsoft money behind it. They had access to the Series X known as Project Scarlet when they made the video before anybody else. They had dev kits before anybody at third party. They, that's the benefit of being owned by Microsoft and being first party. You have access to the hardware. They had this before anybody else. They knew it before it was Project Scholar. They played with magnets before that. Now, what are we doing here? Why is this game not written? Then this game was announced as an Xbox Series X, a 1X Series X. Now, whatever your console. name is, get ready for the big surprise. Yo, thank you, AK Do Sensible. The 10, he goes, happy belated birthday, Jizz. Fire. Yo, thank you very much, man. I really appreciate it. More magnet men. More magnet men, right? They went on stage and announced this. The, wait, 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 do you remember? At the Game Awards. And guess what game they announced the Series X with? They announced it with Hellblade 2 in 2019. But don't take my word for it. Wait, is this the one? Oh, here it is. Let's suppose that you were able. Uh oh, what could this be? Dream you wanted to dream. 2019 Game Awards. And that you could have the power within one night to dream 75 years of time.
and you would naturally, as you began on this adventure of dreams. Streets remember, that's wishes. right, Campos. Look at this. Halo trees, they draw. Now let's, um, let's have a surprise. Let's have a dream which isn't under control. And then you more will hardware. get more and more adventures. And you would make further and further out gambles as to what you would dream. And finally, you would dream where you are now. Dream. You're my number one customer. Oh, we're not done. Watch. Here he comes. But it's not about the console, right? And now he's the head of Xbox. Please welcome Bill Spencer. Bill Spencer! Bill Spencer! Bill Spencer! Bill Spencer! For 18 years and three generations, we've designed Xbox consoles to power your dreams. We see a future where you're instantly absorbed in your games, where worlds are even more lifelike, immersive, responsive, and Res surprising. Responsive! Where you are at the center of your gaming experience. Next holiday, Xbox Series X will lead us into the future of console gaming. Our fastest, most powerful Xbox will set a new bar for performance, speed, compatibility. Developers around the globe are already hard at work building games for Xbox Series X. Our 15 Xbox game studios are developing the largest and most creatively diverse lineup of exclusive games in our history. Tonight, I'm proud to reveal a project early in development from an incredibly talented, creative team who are no strangers to the Game Awards. What you're about to see was all captured in engine as being built to take full advantage of Xbox Series X. Oh my goodness, did he just say world premiere? Did he just say all that grinders? Did he just say all that? Mm, mm, mm. No, no, no. Thank you for subscribing, Big C. Oh, no. Did he say all that, Grinders? He has no shame. He has no shame. Twenty nineteen. 
2019. And what did he say? What did he say? They've been working hard on this game. Wait, 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 what? What Xbox Game Studios are developing the largest work. Wait, he said everybody, work. everybody been working. Developers around the globe are already hard at work building games for Xbox Series X. This is 2019. He says that all the developers are hard at work making games for the Series X. And his first party had access to it. Our 15 Xbox 15. Game Studios are developing the largest and most creatively diverse lineup of exclusive games Phil's? in our history. Oh my goodness. Tonight, I'm creative team who are no strangers to the Game Awards. Tell, so tell us, Phil, uh, tell me what Was all captured in engine as being built to take full advantage of Xbox Series X. Oh man, read that friggin' prompt to Phil. You know you're lying. You know you're lying. You know you're lying, Phil. Come on now. What are we doing here? He's just like, yeah, like look, he couldn't get through that line fast enough. Advantage of Xbox Series X. He's like, hurry, hurry, show the video. Built. Show the video. What you're about to see was all captured in engine as being built to take full advantage of Xbox Series X. Oh, man. Oh, no, not like this, Phil. No, not like this. Oh, man. Phil, tell, tell, hey, Phil, I got something for you. I got something for you, Phil. Ray Trace skylighting feature, or these stick to me. I have yet to read about perfectly invisible LOD transitions not like being this, a Phil. thing. As to the rest of the visual fidelity put forth in terms of lighting or effects, it is indeed a healthy step above that seen in the previous game and many games in the last generation. But we need much more footage before we start seeing what type of techniques we are looking at and how dynamic they may or may not be. Trailers and cinematics are even better smoke and mirror shows than games themselves. And if this trailer just ends up being a bit of pre-rendered smoke, what rendering aspects of it are actually attainable all the time in a real game still need to be proven. Basically, this trailer looks nice but says extremely little. That is a bit of a downer, but it is good to be skeptical, managing expectations regarding next gen. If anything, this trailer shows us that next gen assets are going to be authored to an incredible level of detail at least. But the level of dynamism and the perfection of that detail into the distance really needs to be demonstrated. And until that happens, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe a gen above that 24 FPS and sub 4K. That just seems really unrealistic to me. I have yet to be by artists with crisp shadow maps just as easily as they could be ray traced effects, but with their sample counts and ray counts pumped up extremely high for a pre-rendered trailer. So in the end here, I'm at a pass. The asset quality in this trailer is at a height that is decidedly a gen above that which we've seen in other games usually and especially in Senua's Sacrifice before this. This is something I expect that next generation consoles will be able to show, but the level of the perfection of that geometric detail in terms of going into the distance, even given the constraints of 24 FPS and sub 4K, that just seems really unrealistic to me. I have yet to read about perfectly invisible LOD transitions being a thing. Oh man. As to the rest of the- Phil Ness. Digital. Dude, so this game has been in it's such a beautiful- vi this game was built for this. Talking about feel, feel, like feel. I'm gonna feel the power. I'm gonna feel the quality, right, Phil? All the all this goodness. All this goodness. What is it? Let's see. Project Scarlet Frame Rate Phil. So you see the build-up. This game was shown in 2019 as being already being worked on early. 2019. And we are now in 2024, and this game comes out in a month. Mm -mm -mm. So why is it, if this was built for the Series X, why isn't the option? This Phil, video is being brought to you by cutting... Phil... Not like this, Phil. Not, not, this like, video not is like this, Phil. Where is it? 
Oh, man. Not like this, Phil. And the support we have from third parties, the thousands of games in development, allowing you to... Tell, 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 tell Jessica how you feel, Phil. ...you know, in perpetuity with streaming. You can console, I guess, in this... Tell generation. Jessica how you feel, Phil. A lot of players that like to play in both places. Now, Phil, we think let's talk about some frame rates. Let's talk about what you're thinking about. We want to play. We do that through... Regardless of part of where... ...call is really quick, you know, but you don't necessarily be... Uh, ...do as a team. We started on Project Scarlet. It was about how do these great games look and how they feel. So for us, it was a big focus on frame rate. In fact, for the last couple of years, I've been talking about that kind of foreshadowing. Yeah. Which He's been foreshadowing. The CPU. Grind it. He's been foreshadowing about feeling the game. PH, feel. I want to see those in the chats. I want to see. He's talking about how to feel in the game. He's been foreshadowing. He was so clever. He was pulling some WWE storytelling. He was foreshadowing this. If you listen to Phil real ear, he's been foreshadowing. It's good games, are good, but how they feel, right, Phil? He's emphasizing frame rate, emphasizing frame rate. He's been feeling it. So for us, it was a big focus on frame rate. You shouldn't do anything that's less uh, than 4K. Uh, Doesn't mean every game or every developer is going to wait. 4K. Phil, what was this? All this 4K with that console that we shouldn't do anything that's less than 4K. Doesn't mean every game or whoa, every whoa, developer whoa. is going to. Now he's talking 4K. about. Wait a second. We got to go back, yeah, Phil. Jessica's asking some questions. We need some answers. He's feel shadowing. That's right, Ryan. Hit that friggin' like button, Grinders. This is the kind of Phil Ness. Phil Ness don't belong here. You heard the song. Phil Ness don't live here. This. Let's talk about how they feel. Because this is what you need to hear. When you hear 30 frames, people just think, oh, you're just hating. Oh, you're just a 30 frame or nothing. There's 60 frames or no. No. Do you understand how the bill of goods was sold to us as consumers? The bill of goods was given to us that this was about how you pH feel about the generation. We have hit graphical for that. We're going to feel the games. They focused on frame rate. And he's talking not about their game. He's talking about the Xbox Project Scarlet. This summoner bitch is talking about the consoles, all right? So let's not pull PC into this conversation. He is specifically talking about the consoles because this guy can't talk enough and trip over his feet. Well, two left feet, Phil Ness. He cannot shut up, and he causes this stuff. Those earrings are too heavy. That's right, Michael. They are too heavy. But Jessica, listen, Jessica, Jessica. Milestone or this is completely honest. We don't have a timeline yeah. for when future console has to come. What we do as a team with our hardware engineers and our creators is we think about what is the next mark that we can make that will actually matter to the experience itself. So you mentioned Xbox One X. When we define that, we really set a goal to deliver 4K gaming. And we said that if we can't reach 4K with that console, that we shouldn't do anything that's less than 4K. So how are we going backwards? If you said, and now if you listen to what he's saying, we don't know when we're making consoles. We are going to define what's the next step and we'll build a console based off of that. So he said the Xbox One X was so they could hit 4K. If you go less than 4K, it ain't, it ain't worth it. 4K or bust, he said. So we're already at 4K, Phil. Why are we going backwards? He said 4K. The series, the One X, the One X was created for 4K. If you can't go this, don't do it at all. So we're already at 4K. Now, now Phil's telling us what's the next step. Continue, Phil Ness. Doesn't mean every game or every developer is going to target 4K on the box, but we knew we could build really quality games. So when we started on projects, I have to stop it again. I got to stop it again. <laughs> Did this man say? So we could make some quality games. They ain't really shit for the One X. They said play your old games better. They didn't even You're have a launch one customer for the One X. The Claymores with the 10. He says Hellblade 2 is foreshadowing all the X-Bot mental disorders that happen to be when games get ported. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, you got to listen to Phil. There's the foreshadowing. This man says, yeah. this man says quality games. 
The, like, he already made quality games for the 1X. That's what he's talking about. He made quality games. Now, let's see what he has to say about Project Scarlet now. The, he's already, you ate 4K already. You're done. We hit you with 4K. I don't know what game he's talking about, but he says, so we, because uh, I, I make sure I heard him correctly. He said he already made games for 4K, so we did that, he said. In the box, but we knew we could build really quality games. So when we started on Project Scarlet, it was about how do these... So we could build quality games. I don't know. The console was created and ended before Phil got those quality games out. How wonderful. So when we started on Project Scarlet, it was about how do these great games look and how they feel. So for us, yeah. it was a big focus on frame rate. In fact, for the last couple of years, I've been talking about that kind of foreshadowing. Yeah. Which <laughs> meant focus on the CPU, focus on frame rate, variable refresh rate, ensuring the box can go up to 120 frames per second, working with TV manufacturers on what does it mean for those the TVs to support variable refresh rate and higher frame rates so that the games feel as good as they look. And both of those things are gonna get better in the next generation. Talking about Project Scarlet, I think I heard 8K capability. Yeah. So I wonder what oh, does no. 8K capability Jessica. mean in Not Project like this. Scarlet. We've never been uh, a platform, or never is probably too strong. We're not a platform today that tries to dictate creative to creators. When we say, here's the capability the box has, we know developers are gonna target the right experience for their game. Even today, some games on our platform target 1080p 60 frames per second. Some target 4K 60 frames per second. Some target 4K 30 frames per second. Okay, 60. So what we're saying in Project Scarlet is the box is capable of doing 8K. It's also capable of doing 120 hertz. Now, what a developer decides they actually want to do for their experience is going to be up to their game. And I think that's important. We create the canvas, they do the art. It is a capability of the box, just like 120 frames per second, and creators will find the right spot for them. Today, I understand that for third party, Phil, but what about your first party games? If you built this box, you built the box. What are you talking about? Why isn't your games? I understand a canvas, but your first party games, if you built this box to feel, where's the feeling? You shipped Redfall without 30 frames, Starfield without, uh, without 60 frames, Starfield without 60 frames. And now Hellblade without, without the option. The box is capable of it. And if this generation was about how games feel, you've been foreshadowing for years, what the hell are you doing? Why isn't it an option? We talk about choice. The capability the box has, a refresh rate, ensuring we think about what is the next mark that we can make that will actually matter to the experience itself. So you mentioned Xbox One X. When we define that, we really set a goal to deliver 4K gaming. And we said that if we can't reach 4K with that console, that we shouldn't do anything that's less than 4K. It doesn't mean every game or every developer is gonna target 4K on the box, but we knew we could build really quality games. So when we started on Project Scarlet, it was about how do these great games look and how they feel. So for us, it was a big focus on frame rate. In fact, for the last couple of years, I've been talking about that kind of foreshadowing. Yeah. A big focus on frame rate and you deliver your games without that frame rate option. That's the problem. That's the issue with this whole thing. Where is the option for it? Which meant focus on the CPU, focus on frame rate, variable refresh rate, ensuring the box can go up to 120 frames per second, working with- 120 frames, it's not even hidden 60. Come on. Where is it? That's the issue. That you chose not to have that option in there. And then when they go, oh, it's cinematic. Well, then why is it not locked to 30 frames on PC then? If it's 30 frames is the vision of the developer. If the developer says it's 30 frames is the vision, then why right. isn't the vision on PC as right. well? Right. I mean... Um, doesn't the Xbox um have VR jizz? Yes, and that's another thing. Why, they, is it why, why aren't they unlocking the frame rate? Yeah, I mean, I understand you know locking it to 30 for you know um consistency, but 
should give an option to unlock the frame rate, right? The Xbox has VRR. Uh, superior. Actually, the Xbox has actually better VRR than the PlayStation mm-hmm. because their VRR window is 30 frames all the way up to 120, whereas on the PlayStation is 48 frames to 120. So they could unlock the frame rate for people who have VRR televisions and the game could run as fast as it can go. But it almost seems like they're trying to have parity between the Series X and S maybe because mm-hmm. the S probably can't really go more than 30. So they're just kind of like, OK, we'll just have a difference in resolution. Yeah, because on the PC, they give you an option to unlock the frame rate. Exactly. Well, the frame so, rate. Yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. Right. PC you know, like when I'm on the PC, you, got a lot of, you don't have a lot of frame rate to 30. You can unlock it. You can change settings. You can lower things. Um, not even offering a performance mode or an unlock frame rate mode for people that want to utilize the features in the console that you created. That you that, that you, you built. talked about. You touted it at the beginning of this generation. It's a little <laughs> odd. That, and that's the biggest thing. It's like they made a huge emphasis in that video that this console was built for feeling, frame rate, not just mm-hmm. graphic. <laughs> Mm -hmm. frame rate so when you're putting this out there how do you not give that option to feel that especially you want to hear something crazy didn't they go back and make hellblade 60 frames per second hellblade 160 frames on the one x and on well the game was already on the ps4 pro when it launched it was already at 60 frames per second they had two modes yeah, see the pro the PS4 it, it, Pro. So if, if mm-hmm. they, where's your cinematic thing? Like they, they went back and made it 60 frames. So the 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 vision of making this game 60 frames and ho- locking it at 30 is bogus. Like that is not a legitimate it's cinematic. It's cinematic. That's cinematic thing's Jen, bullshit. Listen, they went Jen, back and fixed cinematic. the first one. And you know what else too? If it's so cinematic, it should be locked on the PC, right? And that too. It should be locked and then on the also PC. Too, you shouldn't have to go the pro. The first game shouldn't have a 60 frames mode because that's cinematic. Why would you go back uh-huh. and do it on console at 60? And frames? then, and then look, the game got those black bars at the top and the bottom, kind of like the order 1886, right? They Which said, Oh, we're going for surrender. a cinematic, right? We're going for a cinematic look. No, that's not what you're doing. It's a trick that developers use so that they have less screen to render, less pixels, and less screen tearing. To and that's another thing, too. We don't know, yeah, because there's less pixels to render because now it's just black bars on the top, so it's it's rendering in, in a letterbox at 30 frames, letterboxed. It's insane. Mm-hmm. Like it, it is like like is the Series X struggling? Is that is that struggling? Like I do not understand not having the option for this most powerful machine that was built by you when you already acquired Ninja Theory, you used this game as a launch announcement on the Xbox Series X launch. So this game was associated with this system. Now, it wasn't a launch title. It was a title that came like four years later now. But this game was announced in 2019 with the naming of your, with the announcement of the console. So this game was built, and you said it was rendering. It was early development. It was rendering. And mm-hmm. this game would seem to be like it, it. It seems like if I built a piece of hardware and I'm gonna announce hardware and a game with it, that game is gonna be the thing that demonstrates the capabilities of my machine. Then how the hell are you not giving that option there? And the biggest problem that they have is that by putting these games on PC day one, just like with Starfield, you're making the better choice to be PC gaming because the game is not, if the game is everywhere, the console is the worst place to play this game. Just like Starfield. It is the worst place to play. And that is not what you should be doing with your console audience. You should be making the console, at least one of them, the best place to play that game or at least equivalent to something of a PC. And you're not, if you got, haven't seen if you if you haven't figured it out by now they don't care about the console gamer it, well they sound these, like they cared back there right. you know when they're trying to sell it to you well not now not these games because they keep releasing games at 30 frames per second and giving pc players the option of all these bells and whistles which pc should have more options yeah. but they're not catering to the console gamer they are not feel listen <laughs> they don't care Okay, they don't they're locked in at thirty frames per second. They're not. They never. Right yes, 
We don't care. Let me tell you. <laughs> let me tell you. We don't, they don't care. care. They don't care. They don't care. They haven't released a single game um, that's utilizing the v, uh, 40 frame per second, unlock. I mean, the um, next gen only game that I know of, other than maybe Forza, that's really utilizing all these features that they talked about in the console. I don't, I mean, the Xbox One X had uh, uh, VR or whatever, something like that, where you could go higher than 60. I just don't, <laughs> to me, man, it's like, uh, it's intentional. Um, that's the that, and PC, that's the problem. I, I think have. it's intentional. That's the problem. I have. I feel like this is intentional. This is not autistic creativity. This is intentional. They are holding. They are. They are not using the Series X to its capabilities for some reason. Whether they they it is it is forced. That's the thing, and that's where I think a lot of people they just want to go trash on the Xbox console. But the thing is, is that. You don't need to because Microsoft is doing their own job to trash on it because they are limiting this console for some unknown reason yeah. at all. The guy did a whole freaking campaign for a year and a half. Like we knew about this Project Scarlet interview, this interview with Jessica uh, from The Verge. Like when he did this interview, this interview was um, – what the hell is it? This interview was done at the E3 of 2019. This man went on a, over a year campaign talking about this machine. Sony announced the PS5 months before it released in their showcase summer thing. Phil talked about Project Scarlet at E3 2019, then announced it at the Game Awards of 2019 with Hellblade, went a whole year, and then talking about it, announced another console, Project Lockhart, which became the Series S, and then proceeded to release this in November. There was a full year and a half, over a year and a half, because he even alluded to this console in 2018 D3, where we're working on next-gen hardware. He alluded to the next-gen console in 2018. He'd been talking next-gen, when, and then even when he said here, I've been foreshadowing our focus on frame rates for, like, you know, earlier. This man has been prepping people for over a year and a half to two years about the capabilities of this machine. So to say now that they don't care, that is some friggin' horse shit. And that's the thing that grinds my gears. I mean, that is some bullshit actions, right Their there. actions show that they don't they to talk. me. I mean, how did they... Remember at the beginning of the generation, they had that little badge Series X enhanced 4K oh, resolution, yeah. 120 yeah, frame ray, ray tracing, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Their own first party games on even enhance. So exactly. like, that, dude, that is the biggest and that is like, the biggest thing. Like you could talk about what like when they say it's a bug, what's going on with the devs, like, oh, the devs not optimized and all that stuff. But when it's your first party from studios that you went out on E3 stage, Link, they went out mm -hmm. there in 2018 from the chest and said, We bought Ninja Theory. We they own us, and then for we own them for the next Four months, they showed them moving into new buildings. They took them out of the, they moved them into, they gave them all Windows computers. They set them all up. All the, the new sunsets they were taking pictures of. They set these people up. You're in the Microsoft family. They were taking pictures with all the studio heads. Like they did a whole marketing campaign. Like you belong to us. We bought your ass. You did all that to not have them take full advantage of the hardware that they might have access to before anybody else right. at EA. And where are the where are the you know Sony Sony first party developers? All right, we get thirty, we get sixty, sometimes higher than Ray sixty. Trace performance. 40, 40, 40 frame per second with televisions that support one hundred twenty fps and VRR. You know, and even even the games that they partner with, a game like Stellar Blade, right? It's got thirty. Um, a balance, a, uh, There's a balance, balance mode, mode a that's fifty to sixty frame per second, and a performance yeah. mode with a lock sixty. This is not a first party game. They're publishing this game, not a first party game. They expect certain things when these games are attached to their brand, right? For some reason, with Microsoft, the console gamer is just treated like a second class gamer. Yeah. And, it, and on it, top of it, this to, is to me, honestly, to not even offer a toggle where you can just unlock the frame rate is disrespectful. And $50, digital only, no physical copy. What all? Well, what about this trillion dollar company? Am I missing here? What 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 am I missing here? They, they 
they took double the amount of time to make this game versus the first game when they had no Microsoft backing at all. Sony was backing them. They got the game out in three years and launched it on a PlayStation. The motion capture and all. And they, and they purposely did this. Now, they did this game. Silver six years to do it. Motion cap, talking all about the tech, all this crap. And did you see that stuff. combat? Did you say a comeback? It's the same in the, uh, thing. I think it's I was the watching same thing. IGN. It don't really like it's changed much. The animation still look very similar. And we're gonna go. Um, it's the one other on thing. one on one yeah. on one combat. This game is not. I mean, yeah, it looks beautiful. The character models and the facial animation. I'm sure that would be top notch. But what is this game really doing other than that? I'm just curious. That makes you have to lock this game at 30 frames per second. She's doing. I don't know. Walking from what they've shown. And that's the other problem that I have with with the Hellblade stuff is that once again, let me get these super chats before I make this next point. It came with the five. He goes, the same people who are too cheap to buy games and push Game Pass are now saying console gamers are too poor to enjoy 60 frames and you got to buy a PC. Oh, damn. <coughs> they t- Yeah, all these people that said, oh, Game Pass, I love it. I don't have to buy my games. They're the ones like showing these rigs now that they're able to afford. You know, now, the beginning of the generation, what were they clowning Sony? Remember, oh my I god, I know, Link. I know exactly like, where listen, you're going, dude. Even, even Digital Foundry, <laughs> I have Sony that. Their- we'll talk about it. I huh? got that. Okay, With, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I'm we'll, we'll get to that. Go Save ahead. that point. Uh, yeah, exactly. They're telling them to buy a PC, go to PC, a console. The thing is, is that this console was built how you feel. Phil specifically said they're targeting frame rates in the build of the console. And if you're targeting how a game feels, then how the hell does your first party not take advantage of the feeling? Of this game, of this stuff. What's going on? Why are you limiting? And I'm not saying the Series X is not capable of doing it. Why are you not having the Series X have, like what Link said, the VRR, the uncapped frame rates? Why are you not? Why? Then, Stefan Snow, member for two months, he goes, necessary. Is it necessary to drink my own urine? No, but I do it anyway because it's sterile and I like the taste. Oh, oh damn. Oh, damn. He, oh, my goodness. I'm about to play some sad songs there. My goodness, well, exactly. It's is it necessary? Hey, he's building the console. If if you, you say like if you look at what Sony said, Sony they built the, the PS5 to take and they built the games to take advantage of the hardware. Phil built this console and your first party, you own them now. You made a big deal about owning them. How are you not taking advantage of your platform? And when you put your games everywhere, PC, console, all day one, a yet another game that plays better on PC and makes plays worse on the console. How are you going like how do you expect to even have a successful platform when you are purposely sabotaging it by not at least offering comparable features that a PC has when your console is capable of it? That is the thing that nobody is asking. That is the that is the head scratcher. Your Series X is capable you went back to the One X and made games 60 frames a second. Talking about feeling and all the 4K and all this stuff. And now you're at here. This console took this long to get here. This is not a launch title. This is not a cross-gen game. This is a next-gen exclusive game made by the company that you own since 2018. And you're not taking advantage of your own hardware. Why waste your time? And this builds into Sarah Bond stuff where there are clowns that are still excited about Microsoft releasing any type of friggin' hardware when look at what they've done with this and tell me how the hell you're why would excited. You, why would you trust else. them again? Another how? generation. They why are we them? talking about yeah? Why are we talking about Another generation. biggest generational, uh, you know, you could blow that out your ass because you haven't done anything with this one. Why? Listen, <laughs> this is what they keep kicking the ball down the road. Keep it. promises. Keep hanging and the carrot not addressing what's going on. Keep doing the carrot. They just keep dangling the carrot because they and and what's crazy is and, and this is again how you feel when you play your games. It's all the carrot bullshit that they do. Talk, talk, talk. Microsoft just talks about. What they wish for, what they hope, and I think they they believe if they keep saying it so many times that event it may come true. They'll just believe they keep talking and carrying the carrot, and while that carrot keeps getting pushed out, the games don't come out, and the carrot and you keep focusing on the carrot, and while you're focusing on the carrot, which is 
new hardware, the cloud, AI, all this bullshit that never does anything. So Mixer, integrate, we're going to do Mixer. That's going to be our streaming platform. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this. And, oh, we're going to have Connect is going to do this. And we're going to do all this stuff. And, oh, I'm going to, we're going to talk modular consoles. And I'm going to have a console that's modular. And, oh, oh my mm -hmm. God, all this shit. It never goes all anywhere. All these promises, man. All these it's promises. Just, it's empty promises, and I'm going to... I honestly believe at this point, I'm not saying they're sabotaging their own games. They just don't care. I, I, the, I don't think you guys even has his hand on some, the pulse of what's going on. Th this game, there's no physical release for this game. It's going to be some Game Pass shit. I'm not saying the game won't be good, but... We don't know. Is it going to be the game, 30 we, frames they're not locked? Gonna, Is it going to be locked 30 frames? Those are going to have dips. We don't know. Nah. You know, we talk about 30 they frames. Know. They're targeting 30 frames. They're doing this 30 frames. And this is the other issue I have with the Hellblade stuff. Yet mm -hmm. again, just like Redfall, mm -hmm. we had hands-on previews of the game with one, no new gameplay capture, no new any kind of demonstration, even from them. Just remember Redfall, no new gameplay Nothing. It was the same gameplay that they shown on the developer direct. All verbal. Oh, I taught. I played the game for forty minutes. You tell me you couldn't grab five minutes of footage and put a little video together of new footage of you playing the game or doing something or what the missions are like or what what the uh, one of the environments is. You can't do any of that stuff. No, the game is playing behind closed doors. Nobody's able to see anything more of what they shown right. at the developer direct. You got all this hands on, and it's all favorable. Uh, you you want to see favorable? You want to see favorable previews? Do we remember this one? Remember this one? Remember this hands on preview? Where is it? What, what was it? I, I'm going to show it for everybody here. Uh, here we go. Do, do, do we remember this? Redfall dubbed serious game of the year contender as hands on previews go live. Do we remember this? Do we remember this? No new gameplay. No new breakdown of features. No new weapon selection. Nothing. Hellblade. All words. All quotes. One of the great games I saw. If it's so great, why don't you show it? They did the same thing with Redfall. Hands-on previews, all positive, yep. potential game of the year. <laughs> Remember, here it is. Here are all the quotes reviews. again. We're going to go through them again. Remember, Redfall, hands-on. Before my demo began, Harvey Smith name-checked Far Cry 2 and Stalker as influences of this game of Redfall. They've taken years. If Arcane Austin can bring its vision and the kind of innovation to these games they did back in the 2000s, Redfall will inject a static genre with some long overdue excitement. VGC, while hardcore fans may be a little disappointed at the less system dri driving, uh, the less system driven approach, Redfall is shaping to be a studio's strongest shooter to date. Melding the studio's attention to detail with guns that pack a punch feels like a recipe and a long-awaited commercial success. God is a geek. Oh, shit. Quote, there are so many questions I have about Redfall. I didn't get a sense of scale for how big or long the game is. I didn't get a chance to try co-op. Oh, oh. oh, shit. Pause that one. How well everything links up. I only managed to try out Layla, one character. But now I could firmly say what the game is. Arcane continues to be one of the developers in the industry that have my trust. And I will be stunned if it didn't end up being a serious game of the year contender. I cannot play this freaking clown music loud enough for this bullshit right now. This clown music needs to be at DEFCON 15 for the amount of bullshit in these hands-on previews. No gameplay, nothing. More quotes. Let's go. Redfall may not immediately appeal to arcane fans, but my main takeaway from the play session was how it feels like an arcane game. The thoughtful level design, the variety and exploration. True Virgil, explain yourself. Where are you? You're still playing this trash. The deep world building. Dude, a vampire got stuck behind a fucking park bench. The AI was it was head up this. 
even if the packaging is different from what we're used to. Polygon, overall, the gameplay loop for the slice of Redfall I got to play is standard open world, but it was still interesting to see Arcane's take on the genre by combining these M elements in the asymmetric complementary class system. I cannot play this friggin' loud music. This this is what hands on, hands on previews. Same thing. Redfall hands on. And what did they do here? We saw IGNs, right? What did they do? Let's roll the dice, eh? Here it is. Look what they shown. All B-roll footage from what Microsoft told them to show. This was not their gameplay. This was all from the developer direct. They just dubbed it over. And now we got the same thing with Hellblade. The same thing. Hands-on previews. No new gameplay. No, this is this is my gameplay captured from a Series X. Oh, imagine that. Holy shit, I would have fell out of my chair. Link, am I missing something? Grinders, am I missing? Was there some gameplay hidden somewhere that I missed? Because I didn't see it. I saw the same, her fighting the same friggin' things that we saw from the developer direct from all the previews that I saw. And just so I saw words. I saw quotes like that bullshit. You think with a game that looks good like Hellblade, you should be showing that game off every little bit. We got playing a Stella Blade demo. We got a breakdown of Spider-Man's mechanics. We got a breakdown of Horizon Forbidden West months before the game came out. The factions, the combat, the places you explore, the biomes, God of War, same thing. Still, Final Fantasy VII. They aren't, they aren't hiding these games. They're hiding, they didn't, weren't hiding them. Final Fantasy, they did a whole goddamn state of play to show you the combat, to show you what you're going to do. Don't tell me no bullshit spoilers. Uh -huh. They went and showed and you yeah. all the stuff, and the game is still incredible. I wasn't spoiled. They showed you the combat. They showed you mm -hmm. all that stuff. Stella Blade, you got a hands-on demo. W what, is the other, what is the other thing? You had a demo for... Uh, Grand Blue Fantasy had a friggin' demo. Hands on. We're playing yep. this shit. Nobody's hiding any games. There's no like, well, uh, you know what? I was checking out Horizon behind closed doors. The game is shaping up to be really good. Sony's like, bullshit. Game, state of play, 15-minute walkthrough, uncut, run that shit. That's what Sony, that's what you do when you don't hide hey, your game. You know Hell, what else even Peach, did? Even the friggin' Peach game for the Switch had a friggin' demo. Where is this game, Stellar Blade? Where is this game, Hellblade? Where is it? And look, Jazz, well, I was kind of disappointed, not only by the frame rate, because I was looking forward to this game, but it's got those I same... I am. I'm going to get it. It's got... I ain't buying that Microsoft, shit. Look, Microsoft just it, sucks ass I with look, their games. I ain't buying it, because I'm not going to support They're hiding this shit, and I don't know why I'm they're hiding it again. Maybe when it comes to PS5 Pro, I might get it, but... <laughs> oh, shit, uh, shit. Or if they come out with a performance, oh mode, shit, you got it. Him. Oh, shit. This is this is it's <laughs> even got them same damn looking puzzles from the first game. You know where you got to line up the little icons and look around in the map. They still got the yeah, same. Did you play the first game? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Did you watch the first IGN game. Preview? I love the first game. IGN, yeah, IGN's preview. Same puzzles. It's like okay, man. What were you guys doing for six years? You know. I don't know. It's same just, puzzle, same combat. And look, all words, all words. Our goal is to create an experience that allows players to suspend their beliefs embarking on a new quest. Look, a screenshot. Where is the hands-on gameplay? You had previews capturing the combat. The energy is felt. It shares a DNA with the first game. Those careful, calculated fights, every ball. Like, when Senua enters combat, we understand every foe standing in front of her, the strength she needs to overcome. The struggle and every swing. What is is this a poem? Is this the poem? Like, I don't understand this stuff. This is such a marketing PR bullshit. Like, what is this? When Senua enters combat, we understand every foe standing in front, the strength she needs to overcome, the most importantly, the struggle and every swing made to feel like you're really there, there with her as she pushes through in 30 frames. Oh no, they didn't put that part in there. This isn't combat designed to make you feel like you're untouchable by mowing down hordes of enemies. Every fight is one-on-one, -on -one, expertly woven into her adventure. Yeah. To align. Yes, you're, not, 
with your you're persistence. not playing this on um on the Xbox, right? You're on PC. No, I'm right? playing this on PC. I'm not. Oh, see that, but that's the difference. I'm I'm on X. I don't fuck with PC. So the the I game was. I, you know, so, you're right. The game nah. was a single fight slash 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 parry slash 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 parry, like almost cinema, very cinematic, very this, and then the puzzles were to find shapes of the um of the thing. The sound was amazing. And I'm not saying that this is gonna be this is gonna this game. I'm telling you and right nobody's now. Nobody's saying it's not gonna be. A, it's gonna be a bad game. I'm not hating on this game. That. What I hate is Microsoft mm-hmm. and Xbox and way they treat their games. That's what I want to be clear on. I hate how they treat their games and they treat them less than what they should be. They should be shouting from the rooftop, showing this game, breaking it down, getting you and me and Link excited to want to play this game. That's what a gaming company does. That's what Nintendo does. That's what Sony does. That's what everybody does with their game, even third party. They get you excited about their game by showing you their game and explaining it. That's the problem that I have. I'm not hating on the game. I hate the the player. I hate Xbox and the way they treat their games. They hide them. They're conniving little bitches, hiding gameplay. That's why hiding load screens, hiding hiding all the no frames and all the shit. And all we hear leading up to the game is tell me what it don't have. Tell me what it not having. It not having 60 frames. Thank you, Microsoft. So Forza, it's not having drag racing. It's not having this. Oh, right. Starfield, it has load screens. It not having, where's the DLC? It not. All you hear is what it doesn't have. That's the problem. And they and then what's crazy is it's not like they shut up and they and they work on their game and just deliver a poor product. They're out talking about every fucking thing else. Talking about every AI, new hardware, new things. Oh, Windows on ARM, a new portable Xbox. They got all the goddamn yellow chairs doing this shit. And they're talking about everything but the frigging games. And when it comes to the games, they hide this shit. Oh, no. Everybody played it hands-on. Where, where's the gameplay? Oh, no, 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 no. But Phil going out there doing interviews talking about some bullshit AI. Sarah Bond dropping emails talking about new hardware. Are you kidding me? The game, this game looks good. Why aren't you showing it? Why aren't you breaking it down and explaining it? The game comes out in about a month. And all you got are words. We haven't seen the combat straight up. It's been her walking and then a couple of single combat scenes. <laughs> That's it. This would have been a great time. Polygon, hands-on, 10 minutes with Elblade. New footage. <coughs> no, let's put words. The gleam from her blade as she swiped at the one enemy. And what came out of all this stuff? And what came out of it? It's 30 frames on the console. And the head creator, the, the founder of the friggin' company, left. Oh, by the way, oops, we forgot to tell you that. A spokesperson clarified at Microsoft. Oh, yeah, we, we forgot. The guy that's in all the videos, uh, yeah, he's gone. The game didn't even come out yet. Oh, yeah, he left. He, he, he gone. He took a hike. That's what we find out. No new gameplay. All, all words tell me about the game. No five-minute capture. IGN, Polygon. Nobody's allowed to capture of the game. What is the what does the performance look like? How does it flow from the from her story into a combat? Show me five minutes of uncut gameplay. Don't worry, you're not gonna spoil a seven hour game. Show me five to ten minutes of uncut gameplay. Show me how this game is better than the first. As a gamer, that's what we should want to see. That's what everybody else is doing. That's what everybody else is doing. But what we find out is we find out that the game is locked at 30 frames on console for some unknown reason on the Series X. And the head person hightailed the hell out of there. Add him to the list. Just like Shingei left, this guy, Tudoroo. 
Toodaloo. He gone. And we got more words, more talk. One screenshot. What? Is, what? Dude, they added photo mode in this game. Show the goddamn photo mode. What are you doing? Where's the gameplay? And what's crazy, on top of all this, is look at the road to Sea of Thieves. Look at the road to, what is it, the um, Hi-Fi Rush. Look at the care and presentation, how those games are being managed on a PlayStation 5. Taking of they have trailers talking about the game, the features, developers thanking that they can't wait to be on a PlayStation. The rollout is incredible. That's what happens when you're selling a game. They're not selling this game. This game's $50 for the suckers that are gonna buy it, and it's in Game Pass for the rest of the world that's gonna check it out because they never even liked the first one. But they'll hype this one up. They're going to hype it up. Most of them didn't play the first one or beat it not. or, or clowned it when it came to the PlayStation. Yeah, it was, a, it was a walking Walker simulator. simulator. That's exactly what they call so, it. Uh, it's, it's so hypocritical to the point of just being... Uh, it's, it's just, just an eye roll, dude. It's just yeah, a don't even, eye roll. You can't take them seriously. Now they're, um, uh, no. they're talking about... They're running around using the word cinematic. <laughs> and then, and then 30 then frames is okay. Yeah, 30 frames is okay Oh, now. my God. When you it's just okay heard now. Phil go off on a tirade that they built this freaking mm -hmm. console for the for the frame rate for all this stuff and and that's what he's doing. Insane. Insane there. And rolling this into uh and you know and that's the problem that I have is that the capability of the box. And then we're going to roll these last topics into this whole thing. Why the hell this is another thing. Then you talk about how stupid they are. Let me make sure I got all the, the chats here. Yo, thank you to Michael Meridian for five v VIP grinders. Hey. Shout out to you, man. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Appreciate all the, the birthday wishes as well. Then you have this 30 frame thing coming out, and you have Microsoft, yet again, whoever's running this stuff, tweet out this. <laughs> How a game plays is better than how a game looks. How do you, the Xbox account, not Windows Gaming, the Xbox account, the console, you know? And then Mike Yabara is just on a tirade roasting the shit out of Xbox and Microsoft going, don't make it a choice. Oof. But why would you even tweet this out knowing from the Hellblade previews that came out last week that it was about 30 frames and on consoles and, and all this other stuff? Why would you do that? That contradicts everything about Hellblade 2. Mike is not done taking swings. Then he goes on a friggin' tirade and then he goes, he goes like this. He goes on a whole article here about how he calls PlayStation first party games as bangers. He took to Twitter. He praised Nixus Software, the studio that handled the port of Horizon. And somebody responded to him by suggesting that his views are indicative of him looking to get hired by Sony. His response was Jabbar mentioned he's merely catching up on his backlog. He said that others shouldn't be mad about PlayStation making bangers and they should be instead celebrating it. In his view, Sony Interactive has under-promised and over-delivered. Hmm. Funny he uses those words because when you describe Microsoft, they're over-promising and under-delivering, and he says that Sony has under-promised and over-delivered, and it's something they've been doing in the games department for years. Dude dropping bombs. He experienced the quality flutes. This guy, if you remember... <clears throat> oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, grind this. Chosen. 
<laughs> you want to see something? I don't even know if he still even has it up. So I remember this back then. So he had a story where he was cashing. He was, I remember this. Like it was the other day. But this guy, you want to keep on, right? Um, he was cashing out of, oh, man. He was cashing out some girl that said she bought. The cashier said that, um, porch, you made a bad choice. Oh, anyway, I don't think I remember. Anyway, the fact that he is coming out and, and saying this stuff now, uh, you know, it's interesting that he's being a little more, you know, transparent and going at Microsoft for certain things. Um, things that he probably always wanted to say. But again, I want to, you know, he is a little sl a slander. I remember when he went on, um, you know, and I, I, don't forget, I can't find the tweet, but he was like, hey, you know, um, you know, some cashier bought an Xbox or bought a PlayStation. He's like, oh, you chose the wrong console or something like that. But that's when he was working for Xbox. He's always been a shit -sl slinger. But the fact that he's going on specifically and going out after, you know, going on Microsoft, like, it's pretty wild. Um, he's a major league PC gamer, so you would think that he would just embrace Xbox and their PC venture, which I thought he did. But um, he said that, you know, they're making bangers. And you can't, the thing is, is like, listen, you could choose if you don't like a game. But when a game is quality... You can't deny its quality, and that's it. You can say, hey, I might not like it, but you can't say it's garbage. And that's the thing. Like, you know, if you make quality games, people may not like it. It may not do what you want to do, but at least you could um, you could say, hey, it's something uh, it's quality. Someone might like it, but I don't like it. But they're hiding their games. They always did this. And this is the thing that that just irked me so much about how how incompetent they are because they don't shut up. You see, Phil talking about frames and... And all this other stuff and previews and, you know, here you go. You know, here's uh, the release window. and no, But nobody's talking about, nobody's showing the game. Nobody's showing extra. You ever games. noticed, when's the last time they launched a game and talked about something? We're always hearing about what's not in the game, what the game it's, doesn't I know. do. That's all you hear about I mean, is what's not in it's, the game. It's this, it's this constant disappointment. I mean, yeah. um. I don't know why, but I never was expecting this game to be locked at 30 frames per second because the first game wasn't on the pro console. You could play a 60 frame per and second. And you're right. And that's so a I whole just point. Assume, the fact and that it's a linear, it's a linear one on one battle. I just didn't figure this particular game would be locked. Yeah, I don't I don't and, and again, we say it's locked, but we don't know what the performance is. We don't know does it dip when it goes into combat. Maybe it's 30 frames when she's walking, and then when it gets into combat or there's fire effects, maybe it dips. That's why these are the things that you need to see in just raw gameplay. And the fact that they made a hands-on preview yet again without any kind of new gameplay, which that's what people want to see, especially in a game that looks this good in Hellblade 2. Why isn't that game being shown more, as, especially since you have nothing of a visual quality especially coming off of those other games, you have this game. This game should be, you announced this game with the console. This should be, hey, guys, yeah, we might not release a lot of games. We might miss the steps, but trust us, Hellblade 2, this is the game that you've been waiting for. This is the game that's going to demonstrate a lot of the things that we spoke about on the Xbox. That's what it needs to be. It needs to be a statement. It needs to be, in the words of Jim Gunnar Ramsey Ryan, let the games do the talking. And that's what it needed to be. And that's why this game, I don't understand. It needs to be enough for me. We're going to have the game. Just let Hellblade 2 do the talking. It's a visual spectacle. It looks great. Why is it being hidden again? Is something not driving? Are there, are there load screens that we're not seeing? Because that's what I did the same thing going into. I feel like I just are a broken record. We've done this how many times leading into Halo 2, Halo Infinite. They didn't show the game. They didn't show it. They just dropped it. They you know, they got the same thing with with Crackdown. They didn't they nobody they don't show the freaking games. They've been doing this for years now. They do not 
celebrate and show their games and break them down. Instead, they just stealth drop them, they dump them in a service and give excuses and I'm sorry's later. And that's what they do. And we're sitting here, again, Hellblade previews, oh, look at this, a demo of the Unreal 5 engine, all this other stuff. And then and we and, and and what do we find out? And we find out, oh yeah, and the guy left. He gone. He's over now. Where is he now? I don't even know his name. What was this guy? This guy. Let's go. Where's the I remember him from the um what is it? Hit that like button, grinders. Hellblade uh two inside. Yeah. And here it is. Same gameplay. These are the same the same videos that we saw. Storytelling, high fidelity art design, and meteor revamped combat is there to envelop you in Senua's world. It's a mantra instilled in the team by studio head Don Matthews. The technology and the techniques that we push here are in pursuit of a There's no way. It's a new challenge that the actress who brought Senua to life, who approaches, squint my eye, elements. Horrors of a completely different. Yeah, let's just the same locations used by Ridley Scott. In a vacation. The oh, here's Ridley Scott's Scott. movie. What the hell? Because they don't have no gameplay. Can at times be segmented from gameplay, story. All quote. Listen, these are all quotes from the developer. Look, Don Matthews, studio head of Ninja Theory. These and the, the where are the? <clears throat> See, all the same stuff. Where is gameplay? Where is just uncut gameplay? This is what we played, everybody. Let's tell you about it. Nope. Nope. Let's see. Here it Puzzle is. that emerges in these Here lands. Here we go. Is this it? Is this all new gameplay? Let's see. Island is Am I missing something? Action. Speaking of action, this is, the this initial is a game demo of exploration and extermination. Is it? Who knows? Right? Well, it looks the same. This is from the inside one-on-one, -on -one, man. You know what's hilarious is when they bought them, people thought that this was going to be Xbox's God of War. Oh, yeah, they were saying it. This is their Naughty Dog. This is their Santa Monica. This they the first is going to take them to the next level. Yep. Yeah, they're showing the first game. With mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. They thought that this was going to now with Microsoft behind it. This was Yeah, with that. Microsoft backing, they were going to take the studio to the next level. Yeah. Never happened. Nope. I'm showing. Yeah, look, see? Uh, all just... All cuts from previous game. From previous stuff. No uncut gameplay. No, here's a five-minute hands-on of the game. They're just showing videos of Game of Thrones. In here, B-roll. Here's motion capture. <laughs> I'll show you. Uh, where? Where is it? Um, uh, what is it? Oh, man. Wait, hold on. What's going on? Where is this? Where is it? Announce. Where is it? Um, let me look in. I'm looking. I'm looking. Wait, did a cinnamon? Wait. This is what I mean. Like this. Look. Why isn't this being done with Hellblade? Well, any. Mercer video. Let's look at a cut. We know. Look. Look, she's moving. Look. Look. Tell the story with gameplay. No cuts. No swipes. This is the game reveal. Play the game. Show me what I'm going to do. Show me how it flows. Show me how Senua goes from walking 
into an environment, to a cinematic, to a combat scene. Show me the move. Show me how the combat has evolved, Senua. Show me what you've done for the last six years. Show me how it flows into this stuff. Do I see cuts? Do I see any gameplay cuts? No. Any of this stuff? Look. Do I see any cuts? Do I see any mocap here? Look. It's all uncut gameplay. Look. Oh, I hear gameplay. It's not rocket science. Just shut the game. Yeah, cinematics. Look at. Oh, yeah. Let me show you a fight. Look at this fight. Oh, yeah. Here you go. No cuts. No load screens. No developer smiling at a screen. Nobody in the break room pointing at goddamn soda machines. Nobody doing cartwheels. Nobody riding on a fucking scooter. No. Just show the game. But wait. You think, and look at me. Oh, wow. You could do this. You could do this. Look at all this stuff. Oh, but wait. They just did that because that's a great looking game. Maybe they don't do that with other ones. Well, you know what? Um... Gameplay reveal. Oh, yeah. Just with Horizon, right? Now we got 10 minutes. Oh, look. How? Combat. Oh, look. Spider-Man. Oh, look. He fighting, and then he goes in. Oh, uncut. Oh, flow right into there. Switch him right to Miles, and we go right into uncut gameplay. Oh, right into the thing. Look, 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 look. This is from Sony's official thing. 10 minutes. Yep, right there. We know the demo. We know it. Why isn't this done with an Xbox game? Why doesn't Microsoft do this with their own first-party games? Just let the game do the talking. You got hands-on previews. Where is this? This game comes out in a month. Positive previews. They, they didn't do this with Redfall. They didn't do this with Starfield. Starfield had cuts and swipes. They hit all those load screens. Just show me the guy getting a mission on a planet and getting in this plane and flying to another planet and doing the mission. Right, Starfield? Look, look at this. Look at the animation, transition, storytelling, combat. We know it all. We know how it went. Right? And what do we get? Where is it? No, from Xbox. Where is it? Redfall. They didn't even show a game, uncut gameplay of Redfall. It was all just like cuts and stuff like that. It was all just, they, they show gameplay, but it's all swipes and stuff. Same thing with Starfield. They did mm -hmm. it with the same thing. They do not just show just straight up gameplay. Get the mission on the on the thing. Yeah, gameplay reveal. See? This is how they show their game. This is their gameplay reveal, Starfield. Looks similar to Hellblade, right? Just slow walking. Cuts into cinematics. Somebody actually took the, the look. Show me. Does this the experience that you have? Where's the load screen when you land on a planet? Where's the load screen when you get on your plane? This is not how the game plays. Look, there's three minutes of this. Uh, this is their Starfield official gameplay trailer. This is. Here's your gameplay. Oh, there it goes away. Gone. Yep, there's a gameplay. Oh, there's another cut. There it is. Here's your gameplay reveal. This is their gameplay reveal from Xbox official channel. You want a mission. How does the dialogue work? How do I get on the plane? Well, let me show me the navigation. How do I explore a system? That's why when they showed all this stuff, there were all surprises in the reviews. People's responses. What do you mean? I just like I could just load into a, a planet. 
I don't fly to the planets. Oh, no, you just click on them and go to them. But do you see the difference of how your biggest banger of the year is not celebrated? This is from Bethesda's channel. Here's Xbox. Here's the showcase. All right, let's see the showcase. Here's your showcase. Let's let me see all the gameplay. Is this the developer direct? Yeah, here. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, this is not it. Where's this developer direct? Do you know what I'm talking about? What is it? The, the uh the direct? What are you looking for? I'm looking for the, how they did that uh Starfield direct. Here it is. Deep deep gameplay dive. Here you go. Oh man, 45 minutes. This got to be some dude getting a mission and going from a planet. And this is what I'm saying about why I I'm not hating on Hellblade 2. I'm excited for it. I I like the first one. I want to just play the second one. But I hate how Microsoft handles their games. They do not get people excited and they wonder why nobody buys them. And probably because they're dumping them in Game Pass. They don't need to do this stuff. This is a gameplay reveal. Thank you, Todd Howard. Let's see. Now you go away. There you go. Dude, stand in there. Deep dive. Gameplay reveal. Let's see. Okay, get a mission. Let's go. Oh, nope. He's on another planet. Oh, nope. There's a cutscene. I don't know where we are now. Oh, now we're just doing panovers now. And I'm sure they're making you hear the environment, the wonderful sound, right? Uh, no. Orbiting the planet. Yes, they're talking. You can visit it too. They're talking over it, of course. We realistically they got, simulate. They got a, oh, we realistic simulate the global lighting. They got a bullshit while they're showing you because the game can't just do the talking. They got a, they got a bullshit. You heard her right. Did you see anybody in Spider-Man? The only person talking to Spider-Man was fucking Spider-Man. You see anybody talking in goddamn, uh, Horizon? It was the cutscenes. Nope, nope. We need Todd Howard to describe what a tree looks like. Oh, here it goes. And He's of walking. course, you can play it in third person. And oh, here we you go. can play it in first person. Here we go. All right, now he's going to get a mission and go on the... Oh, no, what happened? Todd, where are we going? We love exploration Why and rewarding we just... it, but you do explore differently in this game, given its scale. Oh. That usually involves exploring an area you've landed in. You can collect resources. Why don't you just tell us? Why don't you show us? Why you gotta tell me? Do a mission and maybe even stumble upon something unexpected. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. All right. All right, now we got combat. All right, now let's finish this mission. Let's see. All right, oh man, oh man. Just keep going, right? Let's just keep going. Oh, that down with third person. Keep it. Awesome. All right, now get your mission. Now let's go back to the plane and let's kill cash our mission and let's see you do this. Come on. We do love oh. stuff and all of the Why items allow you to pick happen? everything up. And you can view all that in your data menu. This is the hub for everything okay. you're doing, from your so skills, your menu. ship, your missions, and your inventory. All right, now we love to pack a we'll ton of detail ship. in every object, from all of your weapons to spacesuits. Do we need somebody telling us to this? food? We just obsess over the details and food. We obsess over food. When you're done exploring, you can walk back or fast travel to your ship. We have companions and crew. Oh, wait, you can why take do we cut to you. the ship? I left Vasco here back at my ship. All Welcome right, now back, go on the ship, and uh, he can even say your name. All right, now let's see. Let's head out. Let's go. Oh, what would happen, Todd? Whoa, whoa, whoa! We missed, we missed the pot. When he clicked on that little, when he clicks on this little hatch, then it loads, and then you're in the cockpit. Then you got to click on the cockpit, and then you get the cutscene. Why did he skip that pot, Todd? Why did it make it look like I just click on the hatch and I go, I take off? Take with you. What happened? I left Vasco here. This back. is what happens when you do creative cuts and you don't show the game and let the game do the talking. Look at my ship. Todd, I, back, we missed the part. Howard. And he can even say your name. In the and game, when you click on this, you then load into the cockpit. Then you got to walk into the cockpit, load to your seat, and then you hit the load screen and you leave. Why are we missing that? Let's head out. No, well, what, what? no, that's not what we do. What? 
Our mission was to convey- Who does guy? Does he show up every time I leave a planet? Who's this? What happens when you go into space, Todd? Where's the menu? Why is this guy showing up? Is this a CGI? Who he? The wonder and majesty of space exploration. To evoke the romance. What happens when I go into space, Todd? That's the whole exploration. When I leave the planet, I want to explore. Do I fly to other planets? So let me show me the seamless gameplay. No, instead I got this guy telling me about the art assets. Of the golden age. He wants to surprise us with the loading screen. And we've been referring to this approach as NASA punk. Okay. This means a design language. This guy just completely derailed that gameplay. But you get my point. And now, Hellblade got previews. No new gameplay. No uncut gameplay. Shouting from the rooftops. Let's go. Time to cut for a cartwheel. Right, Ryan? Yep, it's time to cut. Which Hit that like button, Ryan. Is advanced. Yeah. Over 300 planets in the system. Oh, here Obviously, we go. Obviously, the game is bigger home for you. And oh, you can see, see that is what Todd's that not visual showing us. style coming through in your ship. Oh, your ship is your home. See, this is when you click on the hatch, you walk, you load into this. It has a loading screen, and you go into here. He left that part out. Home for you and your crew. And like many of the spaces in our game, it has a slightly retro and analog touch. A bit of lo-fi rather than sci-fi, where everything is well used, Show the bathroom. Warm, and lived in. Alrighty, what's the plan, Captain? This is your star map. It oh, there was a load screen there, loading into the screen I'm sure they missed. It starts with the planet you're currently on. You can see all of its info and resources. You can choose a landing spot or fast travel to no Land to. Let's go. Let's see what happens. Backing out further, you can view all the planets in the system. Obviously, the game is big, and it's here you can see planets that have key locations, missions, or life on them. Versus the many planets that are barren here, over, but resource heavy. Where, where are we at? Where are the at? Zoom out even further to see, see all the systems in this part of the galaxy. Here, it's at 200 likes, grinders. Let's go. I got a surprise for you. Away. This Birthday uses surprise. your ship's grav drive to fold space and jump to these systems. Okay. And you Get will ahead. need to upgrade your ship and skills if you want to jump to the most distant ones. But for now, we'll plot a course to the Alpha Centauri system where we can find the city of New Atlantis. All right, here we go. All right, and seamless. Oh my god. Welcome to Look at did you see the power of the SSD? Did you see the power of the SSD? You see space. Maintain your current course while we scan your ship's cargo. Uh-huh, scan the cargo. Let's watch scan how fast he goes onto the planet. You we know what it does. Alright. Click. Load. And then he you have to get out of there and load. As soon as you land in oh. a city like New Atlantis, Who's she? your eyes- I'm on the planet already, does she pop up? What happened? What a cut, what a cut. ...are guided upwards to just these boundless, vast buildings. Every time you see somebody come on and talk, they're, they're hiding something. It's the biggest city. You know what? Herman Holst will be doing drop kicks we've ever made not just in size but also in the amount of custom art uh, uh, how do we get and quests this is exact <coughs> look th th that's how they show it looks great right oh yeah look at all these load screens that they're cutting and showing and have people talking and show me more of this and uh, you know let's see more people here the cartwheels yep they yeah, draw some arts all just cuts and swipes and this and that. Just show us the game and let the game do the talking. You need Todd Howard telling you, you 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 shoot the rock, you collect the resources. We've done this. Look at all our sandwiches. Look at all the code, the sandwiches. I want to play the hero, um, but I want to go out and just start taking things from people as quickly as possible. Some strangers might be looking for a little human connection. Please. All puff, puff, puff. And that is the difference. That is the difference. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thank you. But that's the difference.
Let the games do the friggin' talking. And that's what they don't do. And that's the thing that bothers me. It's not trashing on the game. But be honest with your customer. Be honest with your customer. You lied about how we're going to feel about these games now. Why are you hiding load screens? It's about being honest with the customer. And I think Phil said, mm -hmm. well, I have that one. Where is this one? Um, what is that? Phil E3 2019 or 2020? 2021. No, last year. What was it? 2023. I think Phil For said us. it right here. But the, uh, <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to bring the video over. Uh, kind of a wonderful video the here sitting down. You talked about, like, you Let's know, hear what Phil has to say about out. trust. Does the absence of a game in... When we sat back and looked at this show, and then looked at next year's show, and even looked at next next year's <laughs> show, and, like, all of it's kind of wrong, but we were very confident in the portfolio that was coming and i don't like, i'm usually not the like beat my chest person i'm, I'm still not trying to do that mm. but it in some ways it was kind of inevitable for us that after a slow 2022 right mm. right right we've got over 20 studios when you think about the zenimax acquisition and the acquisitions prior and the teams that were already there that at some point unless both of us need to lose our jobs um, and I've, I've been Twitter fired a lot in the last sure. month uh, sure. um, <laughs> that we were going to hit our stride and be in just a great rhythm of shipping games. And when I look forward and like I had complete confidence in what the team's doing and very excited about the things that we haven't shown. Mm -hmm. right. And I, I think the, uh, the, the thing that, that will get a response and it will be. We always hear wait till next year. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you what do you say to someone who's like, we've heard this dance before? Yeah. I'll just say that Starfield shipping in September, yeah. Yeah. that Forza is shipping else. in October, yeah. that Hi-Fi Rush shipped in January, yeah. that Legend H2 yeah. Legend. Like it's there is a Redfall thing that I'm not going to avoid. Like that yeah, yeah. creates right. a mark mm -hmm. for us. But I don't think it's fair to say we haven't shipped a game this year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't think that's right. Yeah. Um, I think we're going to close the year very strong. Right. Mm -hmm. Both like relative to us and even relative to competition, I feel good. And then when I get into next year, I feel equally strong about yeah. what we're going to do. But I, I get the like yeah, yeah. after. But Phil, he feels equally, sh yo, you heard what he said. He talking shit about Sony, Phil. I don't think that's good, Phil. Always here, wait till next year. I mean, what do you, what do you say to someone who's Phil. like, heard this dance before? The yeah. I'll just say that Starfield shipping in September. Yeah. Man, yeah. Phil, Phil, Phil Bo he's October, not a chess banger, but he's banging that jet. In January, yeah. that Legend age two yeah. legend. Like it's, there is a Redfall thing that I'm not going to avoid. Like that yeah, yeah. creates right. a mark for us, but. I don't think it's fair to say we haven't shipped a game this year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't think that's right. Yeah. Um, I but think we're going to close the year very strong. Versus the competition. Both, like, relative to us and even relative to competition, I feel good. Yo, you talking shit about Spider-Man. Good. And then when I get into next year, I feel Oh, when he gets into next year, Phil, and tell us about next year. Because sounding like this, we shouldn't have had an Xbox podcast that said you're taking it on the chin and we're putting games on PlayStation because, Phil, we know what. I feel equally strong about yeah. what we're gonna do but i i get the like he's a equally strong phil but phil while you're doing this interview it's phil with the frosty glass, glass room still working in the frosty glass room But Phil, the frosted glass room, what are you talking about? What do you mean you're confident next year? You're making PlayStation games. While this is going down, Phil had ninjas in the frosted glass room, damn it. Hit that friggin' like button. He had ninjas in the frosted glass room. Holy shit, yo. They're working right now, making PlayStation 5 versions. And Phil Spencer, but wait a second. Phil, and this is what happens. He comes on here. He shouts from the chest. 
He gets all those Xbox fans excited, gets them all gooey in their pants, pause, get them all gooey in their pants, and then he proceeded to launch this year. He was so confident about this year that he came on the show and said, Phil, what, 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 he was doing so good. He's like, I'm confident about next year. I'm confident about next year. I, I'm even when I look ahead, I'm confident about ne next year. Then Phil, explain, the highest explain this to me, Phil. G, um, it is, we're making these decisions for some specific reasons. Um, we make every decision really with the long-term health of Xbox in mind. Um, and long-term health of Xbox means a growing platform, our games performing, building the best platform for what creators, happened? Um, reaching as many players as we can. We're always looking to learn as a leadership team. Uh, Wait, what you're learning? You sounded pretty damn confident over after here. After 2021, in the last sure. month, <laughs> sure. um, that you sound pretty we confident. Were hit our stride and be in just a great rhythm of shipping. Dude, he's hitting his stride. He's in a great rhythm. Yo. And what, what's, why is he on here crying his tears out? Oh, I'm still learning. What are you learning? You sound pretty good here. Games. And when I look forward and like I had complete confidence in what the team is doing and very excited about the things that we haven't shown. Oh, like excited about what I, I didn't the, announce. Uh, the, the thing that he must be talking about PS5 games in the frosted glass room. Right, Phil? Right? Oh, man, I don't know what's going on, but he's talking about the Frosted Glass Rooms. He must be excited. Let's see about Phil, but wait. That Phil is always giving, man. He gives us all this bullshit. Here we go. That will get a response, and it will be, we always hear. Wait, I'm confident. Time. I mean, what do, you, what do you say to someone who's like, we've heard this dance before? Yeah, yeah. I'll just say that Starfield shipping in September. Yeah, yeah. That you Forks is shipping else. in October. Yeah. That Girl, let him Rush speak. in January. Yeah. That Legends H2, now, Legend. Yeah. Like, it's, there is a Redfall thing that I'm not going to avoid. Like, that yeah, yeah. creates right. a mark for us but i don't think it's fair to say we haven't shipped a game this year yeah, right yeah. i don't think that's right yeah. um i think we're going to close the year very strong right mm -hmm. both like relative to us and even relative to competition i feel good and then when i get into next year i feel equally strong about yeah. what we're going to do but i i get the like totally. after 2021 wait on 2022 like that's what i say we got we have to earn it yeah. right but we yeah i think starfield and, and forza are going to be great big releases this year well, I mean, as well. You have to earn it. Girl, don't give him excuses. Uh-oh, you see? You open, let Booty open up his mouth. 25, too. How many years ahead have you sort of, even in the back of your mind, have an idea for based on conversations you're having with teams on projects that might be very, very early in development? Well, we were just in Obsidian on Friday and <laughs> saw a pretty good roadmap. I mean, when you start to think about you know, what's the future of Halo? What does that roadmap look like when you start to think about... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and... <laughs> the future of Halo! Oh, oh, my God, Booty! I'm talking about your ass! Holy... Sh These people... Like, this guy... This is a traveling friggin' circus. These guys must go back and go, Yo, we bullshit the hell out of them, man. Look at these guys on Twitter eating this shit up. Like, how do you sit... Like... They, they, they are compulsive liars. Like, this, that's why it's so crazy to go back and listen to this shit and knowing, you know, just like six months later, Phil will be up here. Him and Booty be crying their asses off talking about this shit. Months. That we're running a growing platform. We're still in it, guys. Reaching. We're still in it. Dude, listen to this. We're still in it. We're doing this for the business. We're doing this for, the, like, crying more players that our uh, games are having as much success uh, as possible and i do have a fundamental belief that over the next five or ten years exclusive games games that are exclusive to one piece of hardware are going to be a smaller and smaller part of the game industry and that's not some great insight because if you look at the last 10 years and what the biggest games are today it's a natural place whether really, it's one because i don't hear you talking about that here with that big ass smirk on your face you didn't sit there and tell them, like, oh, well, exclusives don't matter. Man, they're hyping up all, oh, well, roadmap. Look at all the roadmap. Oh, you're, you're talking about exclusives, bitch. You're good now, right? We're talking exclusives now. Yeah, legs crossed, smiles. What happened? What happened, Phil?
What happened? What are we missing? Why are we here crying? Console and PC. Save an Xbox. I gotta do it. I gotta put my games on PlayStation. I gotta do better. Multiple consoles, mobile console hell, and PC. Man? You see big games landing on multiple platforms. And we want to be a great platform for creators that are trying to realize that potential. But now back to the specifics of the question on these four, four specific titles. We looked at games that are over a year old. So they've been on Xbox and PC for a while. Uh, a couple of the games are We community. heard it before. But look at this. Machine she games. games. Yes, come on. Where's Wolfenstein? Where is yeah. Wolfenstein? Okay. Where's <laughs> Indiana Jones? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like, sure. But to, to specifically answer your question, um, we try to look out about as far as a typical production cycle. So one of the things that has come up a lot today as we've talked to people is just, is there a bit of a reset on expectations around production timelines? It seems that people still have two to three years in their head. There are a lot of games that could be made in two to three years, but a lot of big games are more yeah. four or five yeah. years. So it's my job to think about, okay, so what happens after you ship Fable? What happens after you ship motorsport right like what is that roadmap and it generally goes out fixing the game about one production so, cycle which would get you into 2026 2027 and it is, is that becoming more difficult to manage as there are more studios uh well you don't a, manage a that team. i mean yeah. it's um you know it's not like i sit there with some board you know moving sure, stuff around that is what he does. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. no we got what booty does right here grinders we got booty right here this is what he does right here here it is this is what booty does right here there it is, Booty. This is what you do. Hit that like button. This is what he does. Booty woke up in the morning, sunshine is so bright. Think about my day, what's in my sight? No game design, no code to run. Just gotta grab my apron and have some fun. I walk through the door, greeted with a smile. Police to life, it's my daily style. A bunch of worlds, no pixel see. Just serving up lattes, living so free. It's the coffee shop, baby. Baby, the espresso's hot and the vibes are crazy. No pants for me, just a cup of joke. Making people's mornings, watch that happy flow. Woo! shop there we go that's exactly what he does whoa man caffeine's pumping Woo. wow <laughs> incredible that was incredible booty showed him again that was wild there's a coffee shop baby there's what he's doing <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But man, they they they, they shot it from the chest here. The roadmap. I don't hear Phil crying about exclusives and it's not important anymore. Or all this stuff. Oh, that's a gaming grindhouse record. Yes, it is. For the ultimate that's the get part of your grinds pass. You get all the songs. 
Yes, it is. It's a, uh, the, all exclusives. Unlike Phil, exclusives matter. Holy shit, pause. On that one. And then on top of that, you know, with the Hellblade, dude left, the guy that told you about uh, uh, how they're keeping the, the studio small. On top of that, the monster that ate monsters for breakfast is retired. He left. The monster that ate monsters for breakfast is left. And now Sarah Bond's emails are saying that they're working on something different. Something new. Listen. I just told you about the hardware promises that they made. The lack of confidence in their games. You see them. Like I just want to have this screen up to show the smiles and the confidence that he had. And you wonder why Xbox fans wanted to roast his ass when they went on and did this show. Look at the face dynamics of that. What happened, Phil? Because you don't know what happened? Starfield happened. That's what happened between this face and this face. Starfield happened. He was high, like he said, we got Starfield and Forza. That's going to do great. It didn't. And now... You're crawling up Nintendo and Sony's ass and trying to sell your old ass games on their platform to make up for the money that you spent on Activision because uh, Starfield didn't pay. Oh, yes. Sorry. I was thinking everybody knew what was going down with that stuff. But here you go. So on the bookmarks here, we go here. But that's what happened between this and this. And you wonder why people got upset. Because he had them, oh, our roadmap is great. All this thing. And then for what? To come out and say, we need PlayStation. We need Nintendo. This. And here you go. So this is the stuff that was coming out, the thing. So now, now knowing what you know about the hardware, Sarah Bond, president, comes out. Let's make sure that you can see this. Here. We have formed a new team dedicated to game preservation, important to all of us at Xbox and the industry itself. We're building on a strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players and remain committed to bringing forward amazing library of games for future generations for players to enjoy. They may have more news to share around the showcase. First off, everybody said backwards compatibility and didn't read. She says, we are building on our strong history of delivering backwards compatibility to our players. We're building on. That doesn't mean that they're making backwards compatibility back again. They finished that program. They said the reason why they finished it was because they made all the licenses that they can. What this statement is right here is a promise that your games are going to come with you moving forward because they are going to all digital. And they know as soon as they start doing less and less in retail, they're going to need to fall back on a commitment. And that's where this is. So when people question about the future of their games, they are saying, well, they're going to work. <clears throat> now, they're not telling you where, and that's the caveat of the whole thing, because I wouldn't be surprised, excuse me, if they eventually, once their console kind of dwindles, questions are going to be asked. Well, what about my Xbox games? Where are they going to go? And that's what this team is working on. This team is working on making sure that those Xbox games are going to be playable on PC. That's what I think this is going. Because they, when they back out of the console, that console is not, this is not, this is not a, a W for the console. This is a commitment that they are saying, hey, the games that you bought, they're going to go with you and we're going to work on making sure that they go with you when you leave. Because we are not staying. And that's what this is. I don't know about 360 discs. I don't know about that one. But preserving games moving forward. And this is what this is doing. These kind of statements here from her is to reassure people to continue buying games on Xbox. That's what they want you to do. So that's where 
this is. They're, they're, they had to come out with a statement that they have a new dedicated team for preservation because their console is going extinct. That's why they're talking about this stuff. Not making new games, but just preserving what they got. Because they because remember, if you recall, back at this Xbox podcast, the concern was what happens to my Xbox games if Xbox goes away. That was a big problem. People are like, I'm not buying any Xbox games because they're not making the console anymore. At least that was the perception. Was that, well, Microsoft's getting out of the console business. Well, I'm not going to do it. Now, they, they weren't getting out of it, but the, the, the rumors went around so much that people, even to this day, I, I, you know, I was talking to my brother who doesn't even know anything. He's like, oh, I heard Xbox got bought by somebody. Like, they're done, right? I'm like, what? I didn't even talk to him about this stuff. We do sports. He, don't, he, he plays one game uh, every two years. He had no, he, he's like, oh, I heard Xbox is, is gone away. Somebody bought him. Like, what do you mean I bought them? He goes, yeah, I heard that they're not making them anymore. He is not even connected to any of this stuff. He doesn't listen to the show. He doesn't even know about the podcast. He doesn't know anything. We're complete opposites when it comes to video games. I'm the geek. I'm the nut with the games. And he's telling me, we're sitting there, he goes, oh, I heard they're gone. I'm like, see, so that, Brother Grinder, that's the message. Like, that, that perception has become a re reality. And they need to have something like this to try to reassure whoever's left it's okay to still invest in Xbox. This is all desperate. And again, what is this, Grinders? Tell me what this is. Over 300 people. What is this? More? What, 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 what are we looking at here? Am I showing you gameplay? Am I showing you a new menu system? Am I showing you a new UI? Am I showing you a new project? Am I showing you a bunch of games at work? Am I showing you... A no. Guess what it is? More words of promises of who even knows what the hell this even means or why this is even news, Windows Central. Or I should call you Windows Phone Central. Because that's what you are. You're Windows Phone. You pretend now you're Windows. You're a phone website. And they abandoned you on that one, so you had to pivot. But you could see bootleg in here trying trying to uh, capture some exclusive oh the backwards compatibility program will continue <clears throat> on future hardware future hardware bitch what about this hardware what what are you talking about future hardware you see the pivot they're trying to they're trying to use hardware again to have you forget about what the hell is going on right now their games are going to playstation Phil is saving the Xbox brand. He needs to be called in it a business. You see the problem. And what they're trying to do is bootleg is trying per emails by Windows Central confirmed by Microsoft as genuine. So let me get this straight. You got access to Microsoft internal emails from Sarah Bond. And then Microsoft confirmed that they're genuine. Tell me this is not a... Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Oh, no. Holy oh, Spirit, no. Oh, activate. No. Holy Spirit, activate. 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 Why? Because the negative news was that charcuterie guy left. You know, the monster that ate monsters for breakfast? I'll show you if you don't know for the fans. Where is it? Where are the projects? Jesus, come on now. A controlled leak, exactly. Tell me. Yeah. I know it's growing. This isn't just a console launch. This is about the future of gaming. Your games, your achievements, your progression, your accessories, your console gaming. Him. He left. He's gone now. But listen, why? And this is, what, again, why we don't understand this. This is what people don't get. Why does Sarah Bond need to create a team about preservation 
when this guy's saying when it's called Project Scarlet and Mike Ybarra, who's left now, the next, these two both guys, these two guys, well, actually the trifecta, her, him, and Ybarra are gone. But why is she making a team about preservation when the guy's saying everything comes with you? And always growing. This isn't just a console launch. This is about the future of gaming. Your games, your achievements, your progression, your accessories, your console gaming experience with Xbox, it all comes forward with Scarlet. That guy's gone. Him leaving, Sarah Bond had to make a new team. So, now... Her emails received by Windows Central on the wide one confirmed by Microsoft as genuine. She briefed her team on various topics. Uh, Microsoft wasn't like, um, uh, security, security. Why the hell does Windows Central have our emails? You know, for a company that that works in enterprise. You know, I can't forward an email to another email without a warning coming up that I'm forwarding it to a different domain. I don't know if you people have that when it comes to work, but when you forward it to like your personal email, cybersecurity gets on your ass going, um, why is that coming out of our network? Why are you forwarding emails outside of our network? You know, for a company that focuses on security, I don't understand how Sarah Bond, who sent an email to her team internally, Windows Central got a hold of the emails. And then on top of that, instead of asking, how the hell did you get those? Microsoft confirmed that they're genuine. I need to let the chat catch up to that story. Tell me again that this wasn't meant as a PR hype piece to make Jez his uh, $20 in ad revenue and, and, and mark it as exclusive. Make it make sense to me. Sarah sent them. Oh, so Windows Central is part of her team. Exactly. Exactly. Microsoft confirmed that their leaked email to Windows Central is real from Sarah Bond to her team. The Windows Central part of their team. In the emails, oh my God, let me get this, let me get this scoop. In the emails, Sarah Bond reiterated Microsoft's plans to build new Xbox hardware. Focusing on, quote, the biggest technical leap ever in a generation. Oh, wait a second. That's exclusive? Oh, my God. Wait a second. I never heard that before. Are you kidding me? That is some exclusive. Wait, that is a quote? Hold the phone. When did I hear that before? XCloud, our investments in franchises like mine have multiple from is a world. So we're talking about the role that hardware plays for creators. Any screen, because of all the other investments we make. So we're giving them an e Any creators right now building for Xbox than ever before thousands. by nature. Yeah. Thousands Let's of them it, by Sarah. nature of those investments. Let's all say it together. And we got more to come. There's some exciting stuff coming out in hardware that we're going to share this holiday. And we're also invested in the next generation roadmap. And what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware generation, which makes it better for players and better for creators and the visions that they're building. Grind is inside exclusive. I just got the quote too. Holy shit. My God. In the emails, it said the biggest technical leap ever in a generation. Wait a second. You just found that out today? I heard it here first a month ago. Amazing. What a scoop. What a scoop. Like, who are we kidding here? Propaganda bullshit. 
But where are the games? She she leaked her own emails on their podcast. Exactly, Ryan. Make this make sense. Tell me that the media, tell me that this whole thing is a bunch of horse shit. I told you, I'm the real Jez. I got, I got the scoop before Bootleg got it. I got it a month before on the podcast. I got the quote. Sarah Bond, let's, let's all read it together. See, I told you I'm the real one. I got the real, I got the, I got the quote before Bootleg got it. He's late to the party. We're building. And then when we're talking about building, and what we're really focused on there is delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware gen- generation, which <laughs> incredible. What a scoop. What a scoop. No, he didn't leave yet, Michael Murray. And thank you for the 199. No, the bearded guy from Xbox, he, they, so, and this is going to be, so, let me finish the Sarah Bond thing and I'll talk into the hardware thing. He did leave? No, he, he's off, so, he's off, from what I understand, he's off the Xbox hardware. Now the Xbox hardware team has moved over Sarah Bond's team because Sarah's in charge of, quote, Xbox, what the hell that is anymore. She now is part of the Surface team. The Surface team has taken over the Xbox hardware. So that that guy left, that sh- uh, the sucker, I, I forget his last name, that that guy who said monsters eat monsters for breakfast, he left. He was the te- he was kind of the Mark Cerny well, I wouldn't even clarify him as Mark Cerny, but he was the technical guy, the You're architect the number one customer. of the Xbox. He announced the monster that eat monsters for breakfast with the One X, and he's the one that announced Project Scarlet. He was their hardware kind of technical guy. He left. After that, Cerebon now has a team doing game preservation as a deflection, and then the team of, of Surface, I think, is working on the Xbox. That's where this portable shit's coming from. But here you go. She said this quote a month ago, so I don't know why that's a quote in her email. She reiterated plans. Okay. Sarah Bond also revealed that Microsoft has set up a dedicated team to future-proof their Xbox digital library moving to future hardware. Build on Xbox strong history of delivering backward compatibility. So there you go. Jason Arnold. Yes, that's him. He's, he's still there. Additionally, it is revealed that Xbox became Diablo's most prominent platform. A year after release, they put it in Game Pass. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Makes sense, right? So then I guess you don't have to put your games on PlayStation then because you're doing a great job then, right? Like, I don't know how you celebrate success stories like this when Phil is like, for the business, we got to put it on the other consoles. We got to do it for the business. Makes it everything we do. Only possible at a practical level. Everything we do. And when we don't damage Xbox and we can grow our business using what other And he says on there, and- we don't damage Xbox. Meanwhile, Booty said at the conference a few weeks ago at their internal town hall, it stressed the brand. That was last week's show. But Phil says they don't damage Xbox. Dude, they are. They are caught wheeling, juke driving all over the friggin' place. But there you go. And this is all trying to reiterate that Xbox is making home. Isn't it hilarious that they have yet to demonstrate? I I said this. I said this so much. Grinders, what did I say? I said this in my prediction stuff. I said, as soon as the rumors are confirmed of the PS5 Pro, Microsoft is going to try to jump in and do a me too, me too, me too when they don't have a next-gen, mid-gen refresh. Because Phil said, we don't have a mid-gen refresh. Our X is our mid-gen refresh. So what they're trying to do is talk about the next console. That's what the media, that's what these insiders quote, again, bullshit PR, that's what they're talking about. We're making more hardware, and all this is doing is deflecting the thing of where the hell are the friggin' games? Why are we arguing? Why are we talking about this shit right here? Why are we talking about things before they even called project names? Why are we talking about more hardware coming, about technical leaps, when you are not even given 60 frames a second on your first party game in Hellblade 2 that you announced in 2019 and it was bought by a company that you bought in 2018, your own first party game not being 60 frames per second option on the most powerful console in the world that you told us about two years before the thing released as a Project Scarlet. And now on the eve of that Hellblade 2 not being shown to the public anymore. You're talking about emails, talking about 
full speed ahead on next generation hardware. Do you see the propaganda? Do you see the fakeness? Do you see the pivot and the scramble for Xbox relevancy? Do you see this? Because I see this crystal clear. This is all on the on the heels of a PS5 Pro, which Sony didn't even talk about. But you got Phil and the Clown Circus talking about the next hardware, the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? On the month before a game is coming out, you ain't showing the game, but you're leaking bullshit emails to 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 Windows Central after crying on a podcast a month ago about saving the Xbox brand and porting games to PlayStation that you've been working on for over a year while you come on this show here and hype up goddamn your your lineup that you're so confident Starfield's gonna do great. I'm confident. I don't need to do anymore besides Starfield and Forza. And now you're trying to tease more hardware. What is this supposed to do? Ryan, Ron, Wild Wolf, Grinders in the Grindhouse. Put in the, what the hell is this supposed to do? Is this, does this get you to go buy a Series X? No. Does this get you to buy Xbox games whenever they come out? No. It's more propaganda, more bullshit. Project Phil Ness, exactly, outside of. This is, this is a waste. What is this? But this is what they're doing. Exclusive. We're innovating in gaming AI. Player first. Develop. Grinders, do you see uh, a game gameplay here? Do you see a screenshot of a new game? Do you see any gameplay? Anything? You see anything? All I see is the more shit that we always see. More words. More statements. That they're not going to back up with action. We're st they're still integrating Activision Blizzard. We've launched Diablo and Xbox that come quickly. Grind, there's one other thing I want to uh, allude to. This podcast had so much information in it that people glossed over. In the first five seconds, what, listen to what Phil says about their plan. very special episode today as you can probably tell by the fact that i'm joined by phil sarah and matt welcome so you weren't even having a podcast before this who, who else is there um wait and we're gonna talk about some updates at xbox we want to talk about game exclusivity we want to talk about activision blizzard why isn't it so funny like oh yeah we're just gonna have a podcast to talk about game exclusivity like excuse me why are we talking about game exclusivity what happened something happened yeah, you just happen to have these topics. But listen to Phil's roadmap before he got started. Now that they're part of our portfolio, how that might be an impact on Game Pass. And we want to talk about hardware, too, and how all of this fits into the strategy at sure. Xbox. So where should we start? Why are we talking about hardware? You have two pieces of hardware out. Two consoles. You don't launch one. Two whole-ass consoles that have been out for four years. What the hell are we talking about hardware? But listen to Phil's roadmap. All right, Phil. Well, when we originally had planned for this show, starting what, back okay. in December. So they originally planned for this show back in December. Listen to what they planned in December. You know, Frosted Glass Room is in full effect right now. Um, I think we probably would have started with Activision Blizzard. Maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up and then hardware, but we've, we've had some. So that's what they were going to do. They were going to talk about Activision Blizzard. So Diablo, I am assuming. Then talk about the exclusivity stuff with things happening. So we know that that was on the roadmap with the, with, they were just going to drop that shit. Like the hi-fi rush, all these exclusives coming to Xbox, PlayStation and Switch, those four games. They were just going to do that. They were just going to just fly by night that shit. That's what they were going to do. And then hardware. But back in December, um, I think we probably would have started with Activision Blizzard. 
maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up and then a hardware. Little bit. But we've we've had some unforeseen news that has come out. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity. Unforeseen news. If you had this planned in December... portfolio how that might be and for the show starting what back in december when they planned for this show in december um, what's in the number two probably would have started with activision blizzard maybe talked maybe talked a little bit about the exclusivity dude they weren't talking about this shit he's still lying a little bit about the exclusivity with some of the news coming up and then no they were gonna stealth drop that shit hardware but we've We've had some unforeseen news. What was the unforeseen news? They basically said exactly what you were said you were going to do. Number two, maybe talk about that exclusivity with the stuff coming out. What is the unforeseen news? The unforeseen news is basically your item number two. And you had this planned in December. So what is unforeseen about it? People just said, yeah, they're making games for PlayStation. How is that unforeseen? Your item number two was that you may be talking about exclusivity. You said that in December, maybe talking about exclusivity. If that was on the plan, this unforeseen news should be a benefit. What do you mean it's unforeseen? It's the news you planned in December to announce. What's unforeseen about it? You act like somebody said something wrong. They just confirmed what you were doing. So I don't understand what the unforeseenness of this is. Like, this is some bad news. I got some bad news for you. I don't understand it. You said you looked and we're going to do it. Unforeseen news that has come out. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity question. Interesting. They are a propaganda machine and they think they can manipulate their audience because their audience they feel is not intelligent. That's where the insults come in. They think that we're fools. They think that we just believe the bullshit that they say. And that's why I do this because don't treat us less than. We control you. We're the customer. We dictate what is a demand and what we want as gamers. And we, when we don't want something, we don't buy it. And you're seeing that, Phil. Nobody wants your stuff. To be honest, nobody cares. Nobody wants it. So stop pandering and lying to us and just make the games that we want to play. That's all you got to do. We don't have to dance around this, sit there, and, and do all this. You don't need all this stuff. Just make great games. What the hell is so hard about that? And be proud of them. It's about the games. Cut it out with the friggin' AI bullshit. Hard latest generation hardware, and you idiots that read the Windows Central and believe it and love it up and go, oh my God, they're not out of it yet. Grow a pair because they have lied to you about the Series X. You're looking at the Series X delivering on the the heels of all this bullshit. They're talking about generational leaps when Hellblade Two is not giving you 60 frames on your own lens console. Like what? What are you doing here? Games are finally coming out and they're being ported to PlayStation to save the Xbox brand? Think about what you're listening to. What they're saying. All this stuff is damage control to save to, to save Windows Central. To save these influences. It's the same ones. It's the same ones. I mean, you want to see something like, come on, this is the reality. You're talking about the power of the customer? And that's what we promote here. The power of the consumer. Don't fall for the bullshit. Look, console sales up 24. March, all consoles saw a dip. PS5 down 9 from 120% last year. Switch down 20, Xbox down 18. Well, you want to know some, some shit? Xbox down 18? Well, guess what they were on Q23, quarter 1, sales UK? They are down 18?
Listen to this. What is it? Xbox sales, UK sales. They were down last year. PlayStation's down from their blow up of like 119%, down 9%. The Xbox was down, what was it, 12? Let me see. It was down in the first quarter. Xbox, the what is it? Xbox uh, quarter one of last year. Their quarter, they were down 11%. What the hell was it? Look, I got use Xbox's own. I got Microsoft's own co-pilot telling me this stuff. No, I had the Chris Drink article from. They're down on down. That's the that's the thing. Like they're losing from the previous year. Like the previous year, they were down year over year. Now they're down on top of that. Like, they're losing on top of losing. It wasn't like they were up last year 120%, and now they're down 9%. Okay, it makes sense. They were down 11 or 12% in the first quarter of last year, and now they're down another 18% on their down year, the year before. It multiplied. Thank you, Outside Gaming Night. I had all my other. And then coming out, publishers, not sure if they may sure make Xbox games. Do you see the propaganda? Do you see what they're trying to do? They're trying to, to use Windows Central, use the media to try to make people think that Xbox is still in this console business. When coming out of GDC, Chris Dring was saying they don't know if they want to make games for the console. Why even support it? So this is not just for gamers, for us to invest. But it's also for developers because they're losing developers and games in this whole thing, because their their sales are so dismal that nobody want that's not worth to support the console. So what Microsoft is doing is putting a PR campaign together to try to say we're still in it, we're still doing stuff. And and when you gotta keep saying how many times they gotta tell you how many times is let me ask you a question. This is easy. How many times does Sony PlayStation need to get in front and tell you how they are in gaming. We believe in gaming. How many times is Jim Ryan, Hotokiness, Herman Holtz, how many times they got to get in front of a camera and say, we believe in gaming. We're investing in gaming. Add that many times of how Sony needs to say that to you. Nintendo, Bowser, do you see Bowser getting on a podcast or in a Nintendo Direct and going, everybody, I want to let you know here at Nintendo, we invested big into gaming. We are all about gaming. We've got the highest levels and we're investing in gaming. Does PlayStation come out? We believe in gaming. We're investing a lot in gaming. Do they ever say that? How many times do we hear how Satya is in gaming? How Phil is in gaming? How, how Xbox is behind Phil in gaming? How many times do we have to hear them? Gaming. We adjust themselves to keep committing to you. We're, behind, we're in gaming. We believe in gaming. We're investing in gaming. They have to keep saying it. Because they're not showing it. That's the whole point of this whole show this evening. Show me the money. Show me the games. Show. Stop telling. Because every single time you got to tell, tell, tell and not do, do, do. Let's bring this back full circle to wrestling. Triple H's podcast. Triple H's is um press conference at the end of WrestleMania one. At the WrestleMania first night. He said there's a difference between listening and hearing your fans. There's a difference. 
They're going to have a great show on Wednesday when they talk about the pivot that they made with the Rock and Cody story. But there's a lot to take from that because the fans, did they listen and hear? And Triple H said that. Paul Levesque said that on that on the end of that press conference, that how it worked out, that there's a difference between hearing and listening to your fans. I hear you. We hear you. But are we listening to you? Do we hear you? Do we do we act on what we hear? Or do I just say, yeah, yeah, I hear you? Because that's pandering to your audience. That's just like, yeah, I hear you, but um, it's not happening. But are you really listening to what they're saying? Are you going to do? Are you going to take into consideration? There's a difference between hearing and listening. And they had to do a pivot there. Because they listened to the fans, and it worked out for them. And now, they're huge. They, they, they did the right thing. And Phil's still learning. But look, this is what happens when you don't listen to your fans. Your fans want games. They want the quality that you promised. You keep saying you hear them. You're taking the rooftop parties. You hear them, but you're not listening to them. And now, they're going to make you listen because they're not buying your product. And now you're struggling. And I remember this. Remember, just a little throwback. Do you remember how this 30 frames thing was a big deal because Sony, when they had their showcase, they showed off their games in 30 frames. And Microsoft was touting the 60 frames. How are you going to feel? 120. You're going to feel your games. And then Sony showed their games at 30. And clowns over at Digital Cloundry basically were like, oh, well, this PlayStation still going to use 30 frames. Remember that? And Xbox was the, the, the most powerful. The mo uh, look where we are. That's why the 60 frames in Hellblade 2, people want to poo-poo and be like, oh, it's not a big deal. Look at where you came from. You were lying sons of bitches. Lying sons of bitches. Saying how Sony did that and Sony was doing this. And then to cap it all off, for the final grindiness of the, of the Grindhouse birthday, to bring it all home. Our creative vision, we want it to be cinematic. A and true get, Xbox like, hey, fan speaks that you want to, make to Rand and Jez. Vision. But if it's like truly your cinematic... And hear what Jez has to say. If it's vision that the game be 30, how come it's not locked to 30 on PC? There you go. Does like PC mm. not suddenly follow your, your, your creative vision anymore? Because on PC, here, PR, if you have here PC it comes. to run Watch. it, it's going to be 60 and everything. So is the PC version of Hellblade 2 not the version of the game that you had intended when you built it because if you were building as if you were building it as a cinematic experience at a lower frame rate then clearly uh the PC version wouldn't be the you know like the PC version wouldn't be the version you were thinking of like imagine if this was being made only for PC they wouldn't come out and say it's their creative vision because the game's going to be at 60 frames. So I sort of, there's a part of me that wonders if there's a bit of double speak in here where this is more of saying it's a creative decision because they couldn't get it to run at 60 on the console to be like, oh, well, no mode. But then you go to PC and it's 60 FPS. Yeah, I'm not, so I'm not happy it, about some of the excuses, you know. So and I think wait, some, that's some not of this the one. probably on Microsoft. Hold on, that's not the one. That one was actually, I believe, that one. No, where was this other one about the whole, this one? It will be acceptable. Yeah, this one. With the recent releases this of Pentiment and Hi-Fi coming out better on PlayStation and following on from what Ghostwire came out worse for Xbox and Microsoft not bothering to give Xbox players a physical release when they had one for PlayStation customers... It shows a complete last lack of respect. Yeah, Rand is totally right base. in that video. Just to be clear, Rand is that whole video. That one was the right one. That one was definitely yeah. It is bull. 
Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, too. Same thing. Like, you know, if, it, if it's a creative vision, then it should be locked on PC. So, no, that one was real. This is the one because they asked a question about why the games are running better on PlayStation, how this is not fair to Xbox and all this other stuff. So, I completely agree with the, with the person that wrote in and what Rand's saying. But listen with, with Jez Sus giving excuses for Xbox. And this is what I wanted to just cover on this. Then, after making the decision to put games on PlayStation... Hearing Phil port begging Sony to put Helldivers on Xbox mm -hmm. was just embarrassing and cringeworthy. It paints the console in a really poor and weak way. Uh huh. The second thing this decision has caused is the fracturing of the Xbox community. The once tight community has been turning on each other, and some of the most loyal and long suffering Xbox influencers have reached their breaking point with the brand in a very public way. All truth. There you I have go. defended Phil religiously against people calling him a liar, and I really thought he was on the right track to push Xbox forward. However, after his recent decisions and the ramifications of them, I think it's time for him to make way for someone else who values their Xbox customer base. Yep. He has misled people about what was going to happen, and his kumbaya stick is getting old real quick. It's obvious no PlayStation exclusives are going to come to Xbox, and his constant serenading of Sony and Nintendo is not being reciprocated. And that is all facts, and that is the truth from a, a real Xbox fan. Because that's exactly how you should feel. That's exactly. The guy is taking you on a roller coaster ride to nowhere. And has made you buy his product for things that he's never delivered on. Enough is enough. But hear the justification from Jez making excuses for them. Making like this is to save the brand and Xbox. What do you want them to do? Now, this is the business. Listen. I agree that PlayStation, Ninten um, PlayStation Nintendo are not going to reciprocate that stuff. But it's like Phil said in the Polygon interview. Like when he Here we go. Like Phil said in the Polygon interview. The guy just wrote in saying, I cannot trust Phil. I have lost trust in him. Jez goes and says, oh, like Phil said in the interview. That does not answer the question because... We have lost trust in Phil. Continues. He frankly said, I don't have the luxury of running a, a non-profitable business. What do you do to offset the fact that your costs are going up? Like, what do you do? Do you put the costs of games up? Do you put the costs of consoles up? Do you charge even higher costs for subscriptions? Hold on. What do you do? What do you do, Jez? You're right. What do you do? Well, let's see. Do you increase the prices of games? Oh, I guess they did that. Xbox has officially announced raising the price of first-party games to $70 in 2023, starting with major titles like Starfield, Redfall, and Forza. Quote, this price reflects content scale, technical complexity, a Microsoft spokesperson told. As with all games developed by our teams at Xbox, they will be available in Game Pass. So I guess they did increase price. So what do you want them to do? They increased the price. Well, guess what else they increased? The price of Game Pass as well. So, um, what do you want them to do? You know, or do you put the games on the platform? You're like, what do you do? You know, well, they're doing both. They increased the price of games. They've increased the price of subscriptions. And now they are also putting their games on PlayStation. And will that be enough? No. What complexity is this? What like it's like, well, what do you want them to do? It's a business. They're gonna go out of business. Yeah. Let's ask Copilot. Copilot, tell us what's going on. Look, Game Pass just went from, look, here you go. Here are your prices right here. Thank you, Microsoft, for telling me your own stuff. What do you want them to do? They were 10, now they're 1099. Game Pass Ultimate was 1499, now it's 1699. The only one that saved us was PC Game Pass. And Doll Bill Phil deals are gone. So you know, what would be acceptable because and I'm asking the question of everyone listening to this, what would be acceptable to you in the scenario where costs are going up? And I got Guerrero Sheridan in the chat says, blah, blah, blah. It's like, bro, this is fucking reality. You know, what, 
what <laughs> you know do, do you want do you want do you want to hear a, a sing song or something or some ma- do you want me to say some magic beans this is fucking reality sorry it's a side layer. so in order to save xbox i gotta put this on a console they increase he's trying to say like well what do you want them to do increase the price they did it already they've increased the price of everything and putting it they're doing everything they're doing both so explain to me what what is the offset here? How does that answer that Xbox fans question? Basically, you're like, yo, this is what they need to do to survive. And it's like, but you're saying, well, they're going to put their games on PlayStation to offset the cost of increasing their prices, which they have already. You're going to offset the cost of increasing Game Pass, which they have already. So they did that prior to putting their games on PlayStation. So have they increased their prices? Have they offset their increase of prices by putting them? Dude, if that didn't work, they increased their prices and they still need to put their games on PlayStation and Switch. But you're acting like, oh, they have to do this in order to survive. We just saw the Phil Spencer interview, legs crossed, big smiles. It's all good in the hood, he said. They looked at their roadmap from this year, next year, and the year next. Phil was shouting from the chest. He was happy about Starfield. He was hyped up. He never said exclusives don't matter. He never said don't do anything. He didn't say anything. Exclusives are not going to be the future. No, Phil was shouting from the chest at that interview about how he's excited about the roadmap and he's confident to deliver the games that he promised on. There was no... Guys, exclusives may not be around in the next couple of years. No, there wasn't. Phil was excited. What happened? Now, all of a sudden, it's a desperate business that needs desperate measures. They were going to spend out Sony, right? Ryan Lenz. Booty wasn't talking about no exclusives. He wasn't talking about Sony. We need Sony. He was saying we're going to spend Sony out of business, he said. I didn't hear anything about we need what they have. Did you? I didn't. I didn't hear all this. Because I know it's on the minds of a lot of people. We hear from the community, and that's an important input for us. What did Phil say there? What did Phil say there? So let's just go and and tackle the exclusivity question, because I know it's on the minds of a lot of people. We hear from the community, and that's an important input for us. We hear from the community. We're not listening to the community. We hear you, but they're not listening to you. What that person wrote in and what Rand was reading, that was somebody that you should listen to. But he does his hand. We hear you. Get out of my way. He says it right there. Between hearing and listening. So let's just go and, and tackle the exclusivity question. What's his hand? Because I know it's on the minds of a lot of people. We hear from the community, and that's an important input for us. So we made the We hear you. But he's not listening to you. But now it's this business. Now it's this, this we got to save the brand by sacrificing the brand. You listen to your customers. You don't hear them. Hearing is like noise, white noise. Oh, I hear somebody just yelling in my ear. I hear you, but you're not listening to them. You have never listened to them. That's why you're in where you are in right now. That's why cloud is not growing. That's why Game Pass is not growing. That's why you had to sell your whole God, you had to go buy whole ass publishers because nobody was coming to you. You weren't listening to your fans. You just heard them. You just heard the noise. Probably the only thing you were listening to were these words, Phil. It's Spencer! Phil Spencer! Now you're Phil listening. Oh. oh, yeah, Phil. There you go. Yes! Now you're listening. Now you're listening. Yeah. 
<laughs> now he listens. We hear you, but we're not listening to you. Listen. This guy. It's all PR propaganda right now. The whole talking about next consoles, all this stuff. They're not delivering on what they promised for their hardware that they announced years ago and we're in the fourth, fifth generation, the fifth year of it, fourth year of it. You'll be a fool to invest in any more hardware from them until they prove that their hardware meets the promises that they're saying. They're not. $80 billion. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who said the trigger word? Who said the trigger word? Somebody said... $80 billion. Grab your control. Hit him, Groban. Time to Hit that like, Grinders. Xbox Somebody said. We're always last in the race. And we will always be beat. Gonna spend more cash. Make Somebody said $80 billion. Yeah. Hit it, Josh. We need it. To be relevant, we'll go all out, no holding back. Led by fearless and booty, we'll bring the games everywhere. No more sucking, it's time to show we care. Start by bringing pen and men. See a thieves high five, rushing round at games over to PlayStation and Switch. And we will say that exclusives don't, don't matter, matter anymore. And then when, when we get started, feel ready for the pitch. Big booty bar, me and the Lulu walk out with, with the bag. And now left with all these IPs, what the hell are we We're supposed, supposed to, to do? $80 billion, gotta make a splash. They said $80 billion. To be relevant, we'll go all out, no holding back. Hey, man. Roman hits it. There it is. I need $80 billion. $80 billion, dude. They said the trigger word. Spotify link. Grindhouse exclusive. Exclusives matter now. Team and Grindhouse Ultimate. You get access to all the songs played on the show. To listen at your heart's content in a playlist. Jam to them. But yeah. They spent all this money. On what? Diablo and Game Pass? What's going with Call of Duty? What are we doing? But now they're a business. Now it's like, hey, gloves are off. It's a business. We got to save this stuff. Like, guys, I, I, enough. They're not listening to their fans. They're not listening to what the people want. And they're getting exactly what they deserve. If you're not going to listen to us, then we're not going to buy your product. And now you're scrambling. You went from confident chest boasting to now? What? Now you got to put your games on your competition? How's that going to help the brand? Your own right-hand booty told you. You stressed the Xbox brand by putting your games on PlayStation and Switch. The Xbox band is stretched. Stretched. Or stressed. Not stretched. Oh, damn. Pause, booty. Thank you, Machiavelli. Welcome. <clears throat> They're stressed. The Xbox brand is stressed. Michael loves Grinds Pass. We got a proud Grinds Pass member. There you go. I'm going to take that quote, Michael. I'm going to put it on the thing. I'm like, I love Grinds Pass. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. Yeah, let me take a look. Yeah, man, it's been a fun party night, man. It's been wild. Grind has been wilding. Yeah, let's see. Got. Let's see. We got, oh brand. man, we need. Let's get up to 200 likes. I'll drop a song. I'll drop a one more song on the way out. We'll get one more in there for the grindhouse. Let's get those likes up there. We'll get the 200 likes and then we'll rock, rock it out. Let's see. I'm gonna. That'll be the grindhouse birthday classic. Let me see which one I'm gonna pick. Oh, I think I have a good one. We have a, oh wait, the grindhouse song. Oh, we'll see. We got to go in there. But yeah. Oh my god, I can't let me do it. But yeah, it, it's really, you know, the going on with this stuff. And I think there was, there was a, another, let me see here. 
True Virgin, I never, and guess what? True, come on, True Virgin, I didn't need anybody to make this song for me. It just Can fell on my lap. My balls. True, this, this song my fell on my lap. I don't know what happened. Your job. This is the remix. I don't know, True, that one just fell on my lap. I didn't even have to make that one. <clears throat> but if you want, you're all coming up there. I might have to make a special. For all the years that you are VIP. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, hit that quality flute. Hit that quality flute there. <laughs> That's right. That's the quality right there. Where is, uh, let me just see here. So we got, uh, let me just get back to, man, I lost my train of thought here for the, uh, for this. It is getting late. Yeah, man, we're going on a long show. That's awesome. It's a birthday. It's a birthday extravaganza show. Why not? Yeah, so that's it. Yeah, so that guy left the hardware. Sarabon's emails. The Xbox goes on a roast. Like, yeah, we pretty much covered a lot of the things. I don't even see. Uh, you know, I might have to do another one later on if there's anything else on here that I thought. But that's pretty much all the stuff that was going on. I really just, I, I think, you know, the whole talk and propaganda of everything, like, it's just ridiculous. The studios show confidence in your games. You know, I don't understand. True, there's mean words. True, Virgil. I don't like those words. I don't have to play the full song, a full version of your song. Those are mean words. Misinformation, dude. I hit play, and Phil does the talking. I ain't talking. It's not my interview wearing a little Xbox pin saying all the bullshit that didn't come through. Misinformation, dude. Phil says it right there. Now, if I was saying some misinformation, I'm going to tell you right now. Know what the misinformation is? Herman Holtz doesn't really run Xbox Studios. There's a misinformation. But you want to know what? I could back it up. Because I got video documented evidence how Herman Holtz runs Xbox Studios. Because that is not information. Because I'll bring the facts. No, I don't spread information. I got video that proves I'm not misinformed that Herman Holst takes care of Xbox Game Studios. I thought it was a joke. I wouldn't believe it. I thought it was a joke. But I found the video, Zero Steel. No, Zero Redfall is trash. But I have exclusive video of Herman Holst managing Xbox News. If you forget, Grinders, there is a great video clip um, here in the Gaming Grindhouse. If um, there is, um, I thought it was a mis I thought it was a joke, but there is a whole thing about you know, and and yeah, you know, just uh, um, you know, just show you guys, just for those that we have three hundred people in here, hit that like button, with, uh, just to kind of show you about the the video that I'm speaking about, and then I'll show you the video proof that it is real because I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was just a joke, but here it is. And leveraging oh. the iconic PlayStation content outside the gaming space. I'm really pleased about uh -oh, the three successes of, of PlayStation Productions working with Sony Pictures. <laughs> Yo, if Herman saw this shit, if Herman saw this, he would give a drop kick in the hallway going, what the fuck is this? If, if Herman walked into the studio and saw this shit going on, Herman Holtz would have came out one of these rooms with a freaking clothesline. Going, are you kidding me with this horse shit? That's what Herman was. You think he allows this shit going on? This is what Booty allows in his studios. The right for him. Where's parking that shit next to her desk? I thought that was a joke. But grinders, the facts proved right. We got it. Video proof. Oh! Herman Holtz! Don't stand for that shit! They got him, Herman! Told you! No cartwheels. No scooters in the hallway. There you go, grinders. The video evidence. 
Herman Holtz don't stand for any of this shit. Quality splits, he'd be knocking people out in the hallway. This is this don't go on at the Herman Holtz Studios. You see the video evidence. Don't mess around in the gaming grindhouse. I got video on everything. I told you. I told you. Don't mess with the gaming grindhouse. I told you. Video evidence. Look at that. Bullshit. We're not taking that shit. Call builds. Fuck them. Nah, there's nothing. I'm going to be quiet. There you go. Told you. Facts. That's all it's here is facts. Video evidence. I knew it. I knew Herman would not stand for that. Quality kicks. What? Call wheels. Told you. That's why you come here. Hit that like button. All you grind is you know what's up, man. You never know what you're gonna get when you come to the gaming grindhouse. You never know. Facts. There's the videos. Herman, know this. Told you. <laughs> That's what I told you. You never know what you're gonna get. He won't kick that front. No, that shit, all that, that caught wheels and stuff, that happens outside the frosted glass. We all know that. We all know that stuff happens outside the frosted glass. Phil's still going. He's still talking. Phil, we just had an entertaining time looking what happened to the studios. He's still talking. Phil's still talking. <laughs> if that don't get the likes, come on now. What are we doing here? If that don't get the likes. Oh, shit. Oh, we got 10 more likes. Man, you want more John? You want more uh, Herman Holtz sleeve with the shirts? Phil, Phil, he's still. What's Phil saying? He's still talking. What is, he, what is it going on? What is he going on about? Phil, what are you talking about? Been on Xbox for over twenty years, and Ugh. I want to make sure Xbox is in the best position for the next twenty years. That means healthy player community, healthy creator community, and healthy business. So. Hmm. Yeah, the feel the rhythm in the air Everybody's moving like they just don't care Shaking it up, breaking it down where I'm for oh, you no. Come on and join it, it's a party of desire Dance to the beat, I feel fancy, come on, let's go Feel the music, all of a sudden, the business Cares I am Phil Spencer, and I am winning awards, bitch. How about the business? If you give a shit about the business, you'll be making products to sell for the business. You went a whole year in 2022 without games. Now you admit that 2022 sucked ass. Is that good for business? 2020, you launched a console without a launch games. Was that good for the business? Phil, all I got to do is hit unmute and you stay stupid shit. Any interview, I just hit play, unmute, and you got dumbass shit coming out of your mouth. Now it's about the business. You went... Out of the last four years, two years with no games coming out for your platform. Trying to bullshit us with some pentiment. You launched a console, delayed Halo, your biggest franchise ever, and shipped it incomplete. What happened to the Xbox business then? Making refrigerators and toasters, is that best for business? Make some friggin' games, release them with quality, be confident, and sell the shits. That's business. Yeah, right, Josh? You just said 15 studios were working on the X years before it launched. 
Now business. Please. What are we doing here, Phil Ness? What are we doing? Did my stream or my video? Oh, there you go. I thought my video went down. Anyway, yeah, I know. I have the Redfall taking it on the chin. I don't, you know, it is what it is. Ninja kicks. Ah! Ah! I don't know if I, I, I think I showed it before. I did the, um, where the hell is the other video here? Yeah, my internet is going wild. All right, we're dropping a video. We got close to 200. Let's go. 200 likes. Come on, 10 more likes, and I'm going into the videos now. We're going to play it on our way out. Phil Ness, we are gone. Peace on the Phil Ness. Let's get him out of there, and let's get the last video of the evening out there. Grinders, hit that like button. Let's get to 200 likes, and let's get a, a song for a drop. Again, if you want to be a VIP, you got upgraded. You could upgrade to the Ultimate Gaming Grinder, and you have access to all the game, all the songs. I'm gonna be putting them in a playlist for you. But you can see, you can see, I have it set up like this for you guys. For those on Grinds Pass, Ultimate Grinders, you get all your music for them, all listed in awesome songs. More to come. I got two more songs I'm gonna be releasing this week as well. Uh, the Phil Ness Anthem just released a couple of days ago. But, yep, Ultimate Grinders, you got the playlist right here. Thank you to all those that have gifted them. And let me see. We're going to do, um, you know what? We teased the, uh, we te what's uh, we talked about Hellblade. Why don't we do the, uh, let me see here. Let's do one more video preview. Let's do the, uh, do, 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 do. Let's get you Helldivers. Let's do, I love that Helldivers, dude. Let's get that Helldivers out there. We showed you a little tease of it. Those who stuck around, you get to see the final Helldivers. Let's do it. Hit that like button, grinders. Let's take it home on a birthday celebration. I want to thank everybody again. Let's get this I'm video. This. Oh, man, I'm going wild in that video. But let's go hit that, hit that like button, and here we go. Helldivers, baby. We start with Stella Blade. And we're ending with Hell Dive is incredible game. Go play some. Hits keep on coming. You want to have access to all these songs? Ultimate Grinder. Enjoy. Preview. Hell Dive is baby. It's still selling like crazy. Yo! Approach is yours to make Rain down freedom Sneaking like a snake Explosive firepower Like saving armor We got it all With battle changing stratagems Watch the enemy fall Searching for some fun, a game to play PS5 in my hand, ready to slay Hell Divas 2, you came like a star Multiplayer action, taking it far <laughs> Then they said, try pile worlds on Game Pass Oh, true Thought it'd be epic, but it was all flat trap Wiping Jigglypuff's 
Hype song from Hell Divers 2, man. Make quality games, get quality songs for those games. But there you go. There's your little birthday treat of me as a great thank you to everybody. I want to thank everybody for an awesome show and thank you for all your birthday wishes. I really appreciate it. And thank you for supporting the channel and hit that like button, share it out. And I want to thank everybody for all their uh all their contributions. We tell me, yo, I got a Hellblade song too, True Virgil. So you know, maybe they voted in. Uh, it's uh, I got a song for that too. So. There's love for that game as well. We'll just Microsoft don't love it, but we'll see. Um, I'm excited for it, but they don't. They haven't done anything to make me excited about it. Um, but I'll I want to play because I like the first one on that one. So, but anyway, grinds hit that like button. Thank you, and I'll just roll the credits here and enjoy the uh, brand new party in the game house hype song as we head out here. Oh damn! It's a party in the gaming grind house. Wait, I got Phil Spencer. Let him dance. Let him dance, Phil. Really like Listen to, enjoy the music. In the gaming grind house, it's a wild ride. Get in there, Phil. We'll let Phil we'll dance it out for go. us. The party's just yeah, Phil. Yeah. yeah. It's a party, grinders. Thank you again. We got quality splits from Herman Hulse, my friend. No more settling for less. We demand the best. The grinders are here. We won't settle for less. Who did you keep the same finger at the door? We're leaving the past behind. We won't settle no more. Behind the frosty glass, we find and we shine. Quality games on the rise. It's our time to shine. Behind the glass, we rise. Cool.
you, grinders. Hit that like button. Be safe driving home because I'll be out there with you. Call your Ubers. Enjoy. Thank you again, grinders.